100 Days in Pal World. This is absolutely the most ridiculous game I've seen in a while, but is it actually any good? I'm experiencing Pal World and all of its memes and all of its bugs and all of its glory for the very first time. But this isn't going to be a run of the mill let's play because every 10 days I will force myself to take on a new challenge even if I know I'm not ready for it. Whether that's a new boss pal, one of the towers, or something else crazy that this game has to throw at us. Of course, I knew this game was going to be hilarious going in. But once all that fades away, and I actually have a few hours to play this game, will I start to love it? Or will I start to see it for the cheap Pokemon knockoff that so many people say that it is? Speaking of big letdowns, this game led me to one of the biggest heartbreaks I've had in a while. Oh, and also, let me know in the comments if you guys think that the event that happened on day 60 counts as a fail. I still think we're good, though. And so it began. And of course, I leaned into the meme. I knew this game was going to be ridiculous, so I decided why not make my character a little ridiculous, too? Fitting, don't you think? And so, as we got started on day one, I was not ignorant to the huge splash that this game has made all over the internet. I knew that it was going to be a meme, and I was getting ready for it. Though I will admit, seeing this cute little chickpea did somewhat take me off guard. I even started to go a little tryhard. I checked in on the element scale and tried to realize which pals I should be looking for. I definitely wanted to avoid normal. It looked like it had no advantages and was just weak against dark. Whereas I definitely wanted to get a fire pal. They were good against ice and grass and of course were weak against water. But first, I grabbed this fast travel and I knew I needed to look for a good spot to put down my base. I then talked to this young lady, hoping she'd give me a piece of her big gun, but she gave me a different type of wood. Dude, I want, I thought she was gonna be pow balls so I could catch you. I wanna catch you, do you hear me? Don't you smile at me. I wasn't disappointed, however, in my first level up. I put my skills into health, which I kind of always do, and then started to unlock all of my skills. I went for pow balls, cause I knew I wanted to do some catches early on, but I realized pretty quickly on your first level, you can just unlock everything. So I did that. Next up, we started to survey the starting area. I had seen from online, one of the biggest mistakes people made was putting their base in an area that was too small. So I wanted to find a big open flat area to start building. For my first experience in Pal World ever, I started to get used to the feel of the game and I was pretty pleasantly surprised. I saw this area here, it was tempting. Uh, it's a big enough area, but I decided to move on. And also I was a little bit distracted by that. I I'm not gonna lie you guys, I kind of freaked out. Level 34, with that little angry demon sign next to it. Yeah, I decided to get out of there. I got my first pal soul, which was a little bit morbid, but okay. And then I saw this guy. If you thought the first one was scary, this guy really intimidated me. I didn't know if he was going to attack me on sight or what was going to happen, so I got far, far away from him. You can see the fear on my beautiful cheekbones there. I then came down to this area, and I pretty quickly started to realize that this was going to be home. It was a big flat open area in a walkway right before we moved on to the higher level areas. So I knew immediately it was time to start throwing down all of the floors and get ready for building. Unfortunately, this is no Minecraft. The building is a little bit more limited here. And I gotta say, I tried really hard to make this unique and different, but yeah, Pal World's building is not quite on the same standard as Minecraft. I made my first little workbench and I was trying to figure out how to get some of these Pal Spheres. I knew I wanted to do some catching. I went full arc mode and started punching this tree here and uh, yeah, no more of that. So I started crafting up my first stone ax and right away started crafting up my first stone pickaxe. There we go. We started beating down on this tree until we had enough resources to actually get some progress done on our first little starter shack. I put in some windows because once again, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard here guys to make this look nice. But at the end, I promise you, we do some real improvements. We start hitting up this palladium because I know that I'm gonna need it to make some of these spheres. I start crafting up as many as I can because I wanna go out bright and early on day one and try to get some catches fast. Also, on my next level up, I see that I can get a bow and some arrows. And I know this is gonna help out to catch those little pals. I start crafting one up and immediately start making as many arrows as I can. And now I'm getting ready to commit murder, I mean, to convince some of these pals to join our team. I also find a pal sphere out in the wild, which is actually really good, super helpful. 
And soon we start our <clears throat> negotiation skills as we convince this little chickpea to join our team. And with that, we have our very first pal. And I'm already starting to fall in love here. I throw him out, see what kind of warrior he is, and um, on second thought, maybe he should just come back instead. I decide to head home because it's getting a little bit late, and I go to make my bed, but find out that I don't have the wool. What's worse yet is at night, I start to quickly freeze. So in a panic, I'm now rushing to make my first fireplace. I don't have enough wood, so I run outside, chop as fast as I can, but luckily I managed to save my butt here, and I think that I've averted a pretty big crisis. <laughs> Little did I know this was the least of my worries to come. Of course, without a bed or any cloth to make clothes, um, I am kind of still stranded here at my house. Every time I walk outside, I start to immediately freeze. I was kind of stuck. I did decide to make some clothes to try to fix that, but I was still going to need some cloth, so I couldn't really do too much. I basically just had to wait out the first night. So, you know, great start, Captain. Really great start. But I figured that wasn't pathetic enough. I need to up the ante. So instead of freezing to death, I also light myself on fire. I then add in my first pal box to officially make this my base. However, this placement definitely comes back to kind of bite me in the butt very soon. I'm a little distracted because right now I've got my first little cute chickpea running around. And yeah, I'll admit it. I thought this was adorable. As day two starts, I get his little bed set out, build it right up, and I gotta admit, I'm immediately falling in love with these little cuties. What can I say? The character design is just too good. The base design is a little mm, too bad, but we'll, we'll get there later. And in addition to the base being ugly, it's actually like kind of not functional. It turns out this area is a little too small. It even bleeds out into the beaches. It's just no good. However, I decide I'm gonna take my anger out instead on some of the pals. I find this little lamb ball here, giving me the most adorable smile ever, so I sink an arrow right in between his eyes, of course. He wasn't doing too well on his own anyway, so let's be honest. So he becomes our second little pal. Finally, I decide to get him a little girlfriend. I find this female level 3 and uh, <clears throat> convince her to join my team. And while that was a little bit of a boon, this next part here was not. I find my first ever lucky. These guys are super rare. They're way more powerful and have a bunch of cool moves. So I was definitely wanting to get this guy for sure. However, I knew that these guys were kind of like little mini bosses. So I started to run around and collect as many supplies as I could. I caught our third little lamb ball and even leveled up. Perfect, getting even stronger. Then I tried to kill a lamb ball to see if it would be easier to catch it if it was dead. This is when I found out you can't do that and I had to discreetly bury the body. I mean, uh, let this little guy rest up in the springs. Get better soon, buddy. So after that, instead of brutally murdering a bunch of land balls, I decided to just permanently cripple them, bringing them down to super low health with my ax, not at all looking like a psycho slicing the poor innocent land balls, no, 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 then catching each and every one until I got five, completing my mission. The idea was I wanted to get a little extra level and a couple more supplies so that I could be better to catch the Kativa, which is when I made the big mistake. I went back home, trying to get more pow balls and more arrows for the fight. Surely a good idea. Let's be more prepared, right? Well, as we started to head back up the mountain, I could no longer hear the distinct sound that luckies make. I knew that we had lost our very first lucky. And I gotta be honest with you guys, it kind of broke my heart. Like I was legitimately pretty bummed out about this. I was trying to be too cautious and I let this one slip. The first tragedy of many to come. Unfortunately, the next tragedy would not befall me, but instead this little Kativa here. Her boyfriend rushed in bravely to try to rescue her, but in the end, no good. So we caught them in pairs. We'd never separate them because I'm a good guy like that. Then speaking of being a good guy, I found out what Lambal's power is. No way, he'll tank down. <laughs> Yo, no! He, this is messed up, dude. Look at him. You can use him as a human sacrifice, and uh, look at the look on his face, I gotta say, made my day. This is when I realized I was gonna love this game. Look, he's totally having fun, guys. That's his happy face. Yeah, for sure. And while I was definitely having a lot of fun there, I figured now would be a good time to actually play the game and get them to do some fighting. The first fight went great. My lamb ball knocked himself out, and the other lamb ball, well, rolled all the way down the hill. The lamb ball's basic move is to just ram at each other in the face and then knock each other out. It's just as pathetic as you would think. The good news is, I was managing to scrounge up a good amount of loot after slaughtering the local fauna, and 
Next up, we were going to catch a brand new pal. The Pangolet turned out to be one of my favorite pals, and he was putting up a good fight, while my land ball was, I think, running into a rock? Anyway, he was doing a pretty good job as basically just being a damage sponge. The little pango was low enough so I could throw a pal ball. And pretty soon, I got my third little pal. The pango kind of reminds me of like the Squirtle, the real sweetheart, and I turned out to love this pal. Next up, I decided to go for a grass type. I got myself a Gumas, which would be very helpful later around the base. Speaking of base, I got back home that night and I made my very first chess. And in classic Captain fashion, it was a disorganized mess that caused my whole audience to cringe. Uh, speaking of a little disturbing, we then cooked up some of the lamb balls, which I'm sure smelt great. I had a little snack and considered feeding some of the lamb ball to the other lamb balls, but I thought better of it. Instead, I just made some cloth and some brand new cloth armor. And I gotta say, I'm looking pretty sexy right now. Ooh. With the rest of the cloth, I did officially make a bed so I would no longer be homeless and I would get my very first sleep of the night. Technically, you can't go to sleep if you don't have a roof. So, you know, problem solved. House complete, you guys. Speaking of working on the base, I did add in a little feeding pen. I put some berries here so the little chickpea would be okay. The immediate next thing on my list would be making this farm. Because after all, I don't want to feed these pals. They can feed themselves. I put out my very first berry plantation and I start crafting it up by hand because at the time, I didn't know that you could use pals to do this. Boy, did I give up on that early. I immediately went to the pal deck and tried to find a solution. And here it was, that Gumas coming in clutch. Turns out, he could do all the seeding for us. And of course, it got even better because that's when I found out you could upgrade your base. Then I got a little Pangle, the number one, and he started to water the crops after they were seeded. I also got lamb ball involved, and I saw this little busybody carrying the wood. Look at him. He's such a hard little worker. I would never use you as a human sacrifice. I started getting all the beds ready, and that's when I saw that the lamb ball can help you out. I gotta be honest, I almost lost it here. Until I saw, yeah, that's right, this little guy. Look at him with his little hammer. Oh, I love you, Pangle. You're the best. And look at how happy they are. This isn't slave labor at all, you guys. Totally fulfilled. They looked like they were having so much fun that I decided to give them a little bit more work. And we finally made our third bed so that each of these little guys would have a place to put down their heads. Of course, we didn't stop there because with three beds, we could upgrade our base to level four, which means now we could get our chickpea involved. Chickpea can gather. That means he will actually pick the crops. And soon we were starting to get a good amount of berries. In fact, I was loving this so much that I ran out to get some more wood and immediately added a second berry farm. My construction crew showed up, and now we have three berry farms. Guma seeds, Pangle does the watering, Chickapea does the picking, Lambell finally transports the seeds back to the feed box. I got even luckier. I saw this Fox Sparks who was already super low and drowning, so I decided to rescue him. A anyway, we get back home, and I see that Fox Sparks can help you with some cooking. He's like my little chef, my little ratatouille. Ah, yes. They're delicious. Thank you. I was having so much fun building my labor force, I mean, making so many new friends, that I decided to make some more pal spheres. That's when I found out that they can help you with crafting too, as Pangle came in to help me out. Yeah, Pangle, you're a little cutie. You can tell I love you, because I have hearts in my eyes. We made another little bed, and pretty soon, the team was looking pretty set up. Look guys, I'm joking about how silly this game is, but at the end of the day, it is kind of adorable. I think that's what's so brutal about it. It's super cute and fun, but at the end of the day, you're still kind of a slave driver. And of course, I wasn't done with being cute or brutal. I found this pair of fox marks and immediately started to convince them to come and join our new little team. This catch was a pretty easy one, but I had managed to irritate her friend, and soon I had to catch this one as well. Something about catching them in pairs just seems right, you know? Like, don't separate them out. Like, if there's two of them out in nature, I really want to capture them and keep them together. Is that weird? Is that just a captain thing? Anyway, I level up and go to bed. I get 69 arrows. Yeah. Then, with a decent amount of ammo, I decide we're going to take on our biggest pal yet. A level 10. This one could be a little scary. I bring out Fox Sparks, and it's starting to look like things are going our way. But soon, Nightwing sends out this gust and, like, tackles me in the face. I, I was a little scared, I'm not going to lie. 
I was pretty sure we were going to lose this fight, and we probably would have. But because he had gone close enough to the base, the entire squad started to roll up all at once. I caught him on fire, and even though the first PAL sphere didn't quite catch, the next one did. I gotta be honest though, if he popped out of this, he probably would have been jumped, so maybe it was a better idea. Then, in the PAL box, I see that he has a level sync, and I was kind of worried that he was not going to obey us. You know how, like, Charmeleon didn't obey Ash? I was kind of afraid that he might turn on us. But it turns out, he still is very much on our team. It's just that his level gets brought down to our level. So, he still managed to help us catch this Kremis, even if she was being a little bit resistant. Oh, you'll learn. You'll all learn one day. Speaking of learn, I found out there was a new technology that I really wanted to learn. Fox Sparks' harness let you use him as a flamethrower. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. I, uh, I tried to capture this Fox Sparks, but, um, yeah, Nightwing was a little <clears throat> over-enthusiastic here. S sorry about that, buddy. Luckily, though, he did just drop the flame organ, which that is the mat that I actually need for this new blueprint. Pretty soon, I see that I'm getting pretty close. I just need a little bit more of this palladium, so I go out to bang some rocks, and pretty soon, I'm ready to make it. In order to make it, though, I'm going to need this PAL workbench. So I go to set it up when I get interrupted. Our very first raid. Yeah, that's right. Now, the very first raid isn't anything too scary. I didn't know what these guys were at first, but I see that they're level 3, so I'm not too intimidated. These Liz Punks on your first raid are pretty easy. Until something terrible happened. My Nightwing accidentally aggroed these two Etheridir, and these guys were the real threat. Pretty soon, they started to really mess up my pals, and immediately, they knocked out my Nightwing, my strongest pal. Yeah, I was really feeling like I was in trouble here. So, I started pouring on as many shots as I could, and my entire squad came out, but pretty quickly, I saw that they were getting knocked out too. Fox Sparks is down, and now even I get thrown into the water. I thought I was going to drown here for a second. Luckily, this Ethereum is knocked into the water, so are half of my pals, but still, at least we only have to deal with this last guy. He's frozen, and he's super low, so I even get a little greedy here. I take out one of my Megaspheres that I had found in a chest. At this point, I'm desperate. I'm just doing this to save my base. If it catches, it catches. At 76% though, I was feeling a huge amount of relief, and sure enough, he was caught. His friend, however, managed to escape and continued to knock out more of our pals. Yeah, this guy knocked out Pangle. Now he has to go. I'm not even trying to catch him anymore. You gotta die. At this point, I was gonna kill him, cook up his meat, and feed it back to Pangle. That's how mad I was. I actually didn't know if you could even, like, recover pals. I was kind of thinking if they were dead, they would be dead. So you can imagine how happy I was and relieved to see this Fox Sparks carrying her little friend back to the bed. That slam ball and that chickpea that fell into the water, I managed to respawn them and kind of cheat here a little bit to get them back. I leveled up and I very much gave myself health because I was scared and I knew I was going to need it. And finally, I put my Nightwing away to heal. I was almost thinking that that would be the amount of time until he despawned, so I was a little nervous. Although, I was feeling a lot better when I saw that all the pals were healed up and that we had finally recovered. Now, it was time to get back to work, so we made our pal gear workbench. And of course, I rushed the Fox Sparks harness. And then all of a sudden, this adorable little Lambo comes running in to help me out. What a sweetheart. So, we spent the entire day working together, and I gotta admit, it was pretty adorable, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. Next up, I added this Anubis statue. This statue is how you spend your effigies to level yourself up and level up your pals. In fact, Lamball was so excited he had a minor little stroke right there. Yeah, me too, Lamball. Me too. So, the first thing I did, of course, was I started to spend some of my pal souls to upgrade the attack of my Fox Sparks. After all, fire starters are the best pick, so I was feeling even more assured of that when I tested out the new flamethrower attack. This thing was amazing. So of course, I tested it out on this innocent little Gumas, and uh, yeah, yeah, it turned out it was pretty good. We went to bed, and I had dreams of killing even more pals. Next day, we got ourselves our first Lift Monk effigy and our very first egg. So now we can upgrade our base, and I decided I should probably make the base like a real base. I'm a Minecraft YouTuber. I should probably be doing some building, right? Well, this is where it got a little bit ugly. See, the PAL box needs a 2x2 two two space. Yeah, I had to make my base goofy looking like this. But I thought to myself, how bad could it really be? I went up the hill a little bit, and um, yeah. Yeah, it's bad. I almost threw up. Next, I discovered the quarry. 
The quarry is a building where you can assign a pal to just slowly work in the background and do some mining to get some stone for you. It's a really nice way to get some AFK materials, and Kativa is all about it. And I am all about this. See, in the background, I heard that sound again. I heard another Lucky, and I just saw some of the sparkling over the pond. I had to climb my way over there, and then eventually, I saw him. The God Lamball, the king of the lambs himself. And so, right in his smiling little face, I unleashed my flamethrower. Even this wasn't quite enough. He rolled right at me, and uh, I'm gonna be honest, he was giving me a good fight. I was especially scared when he threw out this nightmare ball, which I'd never seen before. I almost screamed. I did manage to get him low enough, throw out a pow ball, and I gotta admit I was pretty proud of this. We caught our very first Lucky. Yes, it's just a little lamb ball, but still, I'm allowed to be proud of this, okay? I saw that he did in fact have nightmare ball for a hundred damage along with Burly Body, and yeah, I'm pretty much decided this is going to be my new strongest pal. We had a Crusher and a logging camp to go with it, so we can get leveled up by the end of that night. We had a bed, so that now we have a real army of pals working for us. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't get that last bed built in time, <laughs> so Kativa's out there sleeping in the dirt. Whoops. She doesn't need a bed, she'll be fine. The next day, I decide I'm going to try to let my pals do most of the damage. Uh, unfortunately, I'm still getting a little bit used to this, and I accidentally let Fark Sparks... Well, sh she's, she's stronger than she thinks. Speaking of strong, just then, I hear it once again. Our third Lucky. Yes, that's right. It's another lamb ball, sure, but if it's as strong as the last one, I definitely want it. <laughs> what I don't want is for Fox Sparks to do the same thing and accidentally be a little too strong. Ah, I can't stay mad at that little face. Back at the base, it's time to make a hot springs, but we're going to need more pal fluid first. So I'm going to head out and do a little exploring just over the hill to see if we can find some. That's when I see the very first tower, the syndicate tower, and I know I'm going to have to take it on. Also, I see this huge open area that looks like an amazing place to put an even better pace. Immediately, I go on a catching spree. I get another fox sparks, and pretty soon I see these. The Tuki Tukis! These look like some pretty high level birds, so I'm not 100% sure if this is a good idea. But with my lucky lamb ball looking so strong, I decide to go in. At first I thought it was going well, then I realized we were just tickling them. And then they started beeping. Why are the pals beeping? Ow! Oh my god, that's not good. Yeah, that self destruct not only damaged us a lot, but it also got us on fire. I had to run out of there with just a little bit of health left. I've never been so happy to be back in this little crappy house. I decide to get some pal balls because I'm going to need to level up, repair my armor, and then head right to the statue to upgrade myself with some effigies. This helps your catch rate, which I'm definitely going to need. I decide the next thing I'm probably going to need is some stronger pals. After all, those were a level 11s and they almost wiped us out. But honestly, after that close call, I was content spending the rest of the day just farming. Let's do this. We'll put it right by the window so that it can vent. Okay, whatever you say, Captain. I'm just glad we're making some ingots. These are the next big gate to the next level of technology. We also got a three-shot bow, which is pretty good. And we quickly change it out with our old bow before going to bed. The next day, we finally get to see Fox Sparks cooking them up. I gotta say, I love it. Then I decide to head out to do a little exploring. There's no Tuki Tukis out here, but there is this level 11 Capriti. She's a leaf type, so this time I'm definitely feeling confident enough, and I start to flamethrower her down. Just before I kill her though, I do manage to switch out and get a capture in time. I'm starting to get a better hang of using my pals to get these captures. Speaking of new pals, I see these tansies. Soften them up with my new bow. Fox Sparks does a little more damage, and with just two hits, we manage to get our very first catch on this tansy. The lucky number there, of course. And soon, I decide to go on a spree catching as many tansies as I can. That's when we see our very first boss. Chillette level 11 is definitely the starter boss, but for me at this time, I was a little intimidated, so I back off. I catch a new little pal, a tea leaf, which I thought is so cute, and then I see this lift monk, and I decide to get a new catch too. That's three brand new pals today. I also see this, a skill tree. These are kind of like TMs, and each one is a brand new move that we can teach our pals. So I see Igneous Breath, yeah. I'm definitely loading that up. Basically, that's a second flamethrower for Fox Sparks. With this brand new skill, I'm feeling like we may actually have a chance. 
So I start to use my flamethrower, and that's what I remember. Fire is also really effective against ice, and we start to literally melt the health bar of this Chillette. Foxpark sends out her igneous breath, and soon we have this Chillette right where we want her. I threw out my first pal sphere, but that's when I realized the trick about these bosses. So you can kill them pretty easily, but the hard part is actually catching them. You have to get them super low, and even then, it takes a lot of spheres to actually get the job done. We get a little bit lucky here, and we do manage to pull this one off. Our very first boss, our Chillette. Plus, we leveled. We're doing good. D don't mind the fact that I'm actually literally on fire right now. That's a minor side effect. Soon, with this next level up, we can get a high-quality workbench and our metal tools. And no, I will not be making any more ironic jokes. I get back home, and I also see that we have Liftmunk's submachine gun. Um, yes. Yes, please. And soon, me and Lamball have our very first gun. Yeah, I was excited. Of course, you know I'm going to go test it out on the innocent wildlife, and we immediately start gunning down the population. First, we shoot up the Nightwing, then we finish it off with the flamethrower. This becomes our one-two punch, our effective attacks. After seeing just how helpful all the metal is, I decide to spend the night doing a little bit of mining. I cook it up because I definitely want to get some metal tools, but it's getting late, so we decide to go to bed so that Fox Sparks can get started on the next day. Also, we start to craft up our very first nails, N not so fun. Then we have to farm metal right next to this Giga Boss, also not so fun. However, this workbench, actually pretty fun. And yeah, the incubator, pretty strong too. After adding these two new items to the base, load this up with the damp egg, I'm feeling pretty good. So we continue getting stronger by adding a metal ax and a metal pick. I head back out because I want to get myself another pangle. These guys are so amazing. Like seriously, if you're brand new, you want to get a ton of these guys. They're really helpful and I mean, come on, they're just the most adorable things ever. Also though, they give you PAL fluids, which we're really going to need. We get a little bit more metal and a little bit more PAL fluid via the pangles, and we even get to hatch our egg. This is the first ever egg I've hatched, and I get a brand new PAL, a cellar egg. Nice. Then we put in our common egg there, and I'm finally able to craft up the metal pick. And while everything's going pretty good for me, right before the day ends, I decide I need a little more PAL fluid. So I decide to see what Chillette's all about. She starts launching some ice crystals at these pangolets, but they're not too effective. We manage to get a catch, then I decide to send out Lamball, and it turns out Lamball was a little too strong. But I mean, PAL fluid is PAL fluid, so... I decide to finally stay up late one night to see the Nocturnal Pals. This hoot crates helps me level up, but this hoot crates, not so much. I think it's best to just go to bed. With that level 12, we can finally get some pelt armor and a cleaver. I wonder what that will be for. After hatching that Ethereador, we get the pelt armor crafting. This should give us some really good defense, and I'm loving it already. Next, we get some headgear for even more protection. Yeah, I know it's just a feather, but it still all adds up. Now, we're going to go on our first real attack. I head to the Syndicate camp. Freeze! And with this machine gun on my head, we start mowing down thugs. I can still shoot my bow and arrow while Liftmunk starts blasting everybody. We can now get our first pal rescue, and we get an Arsox with two kindling. That should be really helpful. And I'm feeling so confident after that, and I decide why not try out this dungeon. Now I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. I did do this entire dungeon and wasted a few of these thugs, but in my opinion, dungeons are just kind of mid. They're not that entertaining, so I'm going to skip through most of it. I did see this Maw, which was a new pal, we managed to get it down, and just barely, we managed to get a capture. So the dungeon isn't totally useless. Also, we come across this, a Kilimari. It's like a killer calamari. Yeah, a bad pun. I know, I know. Trust me, I know bad puns. This one is rough. But we didn't have a rough time catching him. I then see these pals with this really cool hair and this cool aesthetic. Fortunately, they're kind of in the middle of a battle here, and... I do see an opportunity here, as this one's low, and I decide to throw a sphere. Then we just shoot this thug in the face, I mean, nobody's gonna miss him. And although it wasn't easy, we did manage to catch ourselves a daydream. Also we managed to waste the thugs, I don't know what's more fun. I do know what's really fun, leveling up, and after getting to level 13, we can now check out this Fuddler. It's our first real Earth type, but speaking of pals. How World really knows what they're doing, and they threw the ultimate meme at us here. Our very first dungeon, of course, is a Depresso. 
the most ridiculous pal in the game. We managed to get one completely wiped out, and we even managed to catch one of the little underlings. Now, we're going for the boss. And pretty soon, we've got a pretty good chance of capturing this boss depresso. And we get a little bit lucky. With our very first sphere, we managed to grab him. Not too bad. At the end of every dungeon, you get these chests. We got lucky. We got an attack pendant, but also blueprints for a crossbow. Yeah. We hatch another Ichthyridir. Not super thrilled about that, but anyway, not complaining. We go out to get a pangolet, and soon we have enough pal fluids to finally make our hot springs. I gotta say, I think the pals have definitely earned that one. And I have definitely earned this uncommon crossbow. Not only is the crossbow a big upgrade, but this crossbow will be especially more powerful. We're gonna need that crossbow power spike for our day 10 event. So, sure enough, the next day we wake up and Lambal has got that crossbow done for us. It's pretty impressive. We go from 40 damage to 364. And I'm feeling really confident. I'm gonna have to, because now we're gonna take on our first big event, the Rain Syndicate Tower. This is gonna be our first real boss battle. Zoe and Grizzbolt. Here we go. I would be honest with you guys, I've actually seen a video of this first fight, so I pretty much knew what I was in store for. Unfortunately, I didn't really have a type advantage. I was just hoping I'd be strong enough with Lift Monk. We use her machine gun and then immediately switch to throw out some flamethrowers. We're doing some pretty good damage. But the real trick to beating these bosses is avoiding damage. We use these pillars as cover and try to avoid some of Grizzbolt's biggest attacks. I decide to call back little sparks and pull Lamball out, hoping he'll throw down the Mega Ball. Sure enough, he does. It's pretty good damage. But honestly, at this point, the strongest tool we have is this amazing crossbow. And I need to make sure to try to land my shots, because <laughs> Lamball sure isn't. He gets stunned and locked up before he can get an attack. Yeah, you know what? He's trying, okay, guys? Fox Sparks, on the other hand, is actually doing a pretty good job. That flamethrower is pretty impressive. Unfortunately, Grizzbolt's attacks are pretty impressive, too. We take a ball of electricity, but our ult is ready. We start to use our flamethrower and really melt down Grizzbolt to the last bits of health. We're really starting to do well now. This crossbow is doing a lot of damage. All the while, Nightwing is coming in for these really big attacks. And soon, we've got this first fight in the bag. Not too bad. By the way, if it looks like a teabagging there, <laughs> that's completely, completely not what's happening. I was, I was looking for a penny on the ground. Don't be ridiculous. And we completed the tutorial, which let's be honest, that's kind of the most important thing because now I don't have that dumb thing in my face. I built a sphere workbench, but it's gonna need a lot of metal. So I am gonna have to do a little bit of farming. When I come back, we're ready for the mega sphere. And sure enough, with that metal, we can craft a couple of them up, but I'll get to work on that tomorrow. Bright and early the next day, I set up this medical bench outside because I just don't really need it. And uh, same thing with this cooler. I just don't really see a need for them and I don't care. The only reason I'm adding them is because they help me upgrade my base. What I really want is to make some of these mega spheres. Now we should have some really good captures. So I test it out. The regular pal sphere did 25. The mega sphere, however, goes all the way up to 54. And yes, I know that was a total waste of a mega sphere, but we now know that this mega sphere is almost twice as strong as the standard pal sphere. Quick side note, guys, just so you know, the number one way to level up in this game is to absolutely catch pals, by far. Speaking of catching pals, we may have not got that fwach, but with the new mega spheres and a little bit of flamethrower, we can absolutely capture this super strong pal, a dinosaur. Level 16, my strongest yet. We also managed to get the spark hit, my very first electric type, and we managed to kill that spark hit, so, uh, oopsie. We then managed to catch this rush ore and capture them in a pair, just the way I like. Then I come across something a little bit unique. I didn't know there were NPCs in this game, and I come across the small settlement. This is the first little place where you can find a market and buy stuff. Speaking of which, I see that we can buy pal spheres, which is nice. Okay, cool. He sells spheres, which is always nice. He sells arrows. He sells wheat seeds. But more importantly, we come to this pal merchant where we can actually buy pals. Um, pay no attention to that guillotine over there in the side, by the way. Ugh. Moving on without asking questions, we go to this new biome, which looks like an autumn biome, which I'm really into. While we're here, we see a frack. I don't even know if I can pronounce his name. Is that, is that technically going to get me demonetized? Anyway, we managed to catch one and then quickly catch another. 
I do like this little guy too. He's like a more hilarious version of Pangle. This little cutie, I do kind of feel bad. Every time I catch her, feels a little bit criminal. Vixie is one of the cuter little mons, and we do decide to catch them in a pair as well. I have to be careful though, because my armor's getting a little bit low. However, I'm not going home just yet, because I see the next shiny. Yeah, that's right. It might just be a chickpea, but we are 100% getting this catch. I start to flamethrower the chickpea down and do a huge amount of damage. I switch them out just in time and throw out a pal sphere. I'm getting really good at this because we get yet another shiny. We also get an upgraded shield. And I gotta say, at this point of the playthrough, I was feeling amazing. I was really getting why Pal World was such a hit. And so, in classic Pal World antic fashion, I decide to run outside and start slicing the face up of these poor innocent pals. We find these two goo mosses and we catch them both. Because I know that you can get a total of 10 pals before you stop getting XP. And then I go after this Fox Sparks. I just, I seriously just slice his face up. Like, what am I doing? This is so psychotic. Although it is technically a vital part of the core game cycle. So here we go. Then I see this. A bunch of the thugs from the syndicate are actually trying to poach this mammoth. Um, I don't think it's going too well for them though. I was considering waiting until they got a little bit lower and maybe try to poach it myself, but maybe a bad call. I'll just go for the Lift Monk and the Rush Boar instead. Next up, I see another Dinosum, and I decide to use Lift Monk to gun him down, then catch him up. And with that big catch, we get another level up. And then I discover something that you guys might want to know about. A little further up the hill, there's this fast travel called the Desolate Church. And right next to it is a ton of ore. This is going to be really helpful for us later. In the meantime, we're trying to catch a few more Caprizzi and a Sparkette. And we, we even go after the Chickapees. Look, nobody's safe for me, okay? I'm on a spree right now. I'm really on a roll. Speaking of on a roll, I decide to take a small break from my pal catching spree because we finally unlocked stone structures. And this big open area is begging for my brand new base. It's perfect. Even at the very edges, I still have a ton of space to build, and I start immediately putting down a ton of stone structures. I start to make up the walls, and pretty soon, we have a good outline for the very beginning of our final official base. I am struggling a little bit with the building. Sometimes I can put down the structures, but I still can't add the walls. I don't know, it's a little bit frustrating, but pretty soon by that night, we're getting a couple of the towers looking pretty good. The next day, we manage to hatch a brand new dire wolf, which is always fun. Then we get right back to building our stone tower, as frustrating as it is. I make this little tower here, trying to make it kind of look like a church, but it's not 100% to my liking. I decide to break it and move it a little further out so it is its own freestanding tower, which in the end, I think turned out a lot better. And I work all through the day, but let's take a peek at it tomorrow in the daylight. Now, personally, as a, a Minecraft streamer, I'm always going to have a really high standard for building. I gotta say, I kind of hope that Pal World really picks it up. The building is really fun, I just hope that they get a little bit more customizable. That being said, I'm trying to find ways to make cool walls and incorporate giant fences to get this very unique looking front wall with side towers. And I gotta say, I am figuring it out. I'm making something really come together here. The little triangles on the roof though are just not quite working out. I decided to make a pretty even clean cut looking two towers and the walls out front. By the end of the day, it's starting to look pretty good. I, I mean, it's got kind of like a Jurassic Park kind of vibe to it, but, but still, it's looking pretty good. I even decided to put some wood up on the walls, but it's starting to have this weird look of like ancient ruins mixed with like Roman encampment, and I'm not 100% about it. I decided to take those down and I replaced them with sandbags to make it look a little bit more like a defensive wall. I then do add some of those wooden defensive walls to the very top of the towers. I will say this ends up looking pretty amazing. And with those sandbags, yeah, it's coming together. I do have to do a lot of work as I have to get the entire left side of the wall set up, and then I have to get the actual side set up as well. Each one of these gets its own large wall, but by the end of the day, I'm starting to figure it out. And I'm starting to really like how it's all coming together. And just as I was starting to get deep and immersed in this game, the meme had to come right back. We got a raid, but not just any raid. Yeah, that's right. We got a raid of Lavanders. You know, Pal World's low punnies, the e-girls, the disgusting thoughts. You know, the type of girls that I thought I left back on Twitch. Well, they came back and found me. And I have no problem gunning them down, shooting them right in the face as many times as I can. 
That being said, I actually decided to try to catch one. These are level 17s, and I actually have no pals at this base, so this is really dangerous. One of the catches goes well, but I am not out of the dark anytime soon. Seeking the night of love, it's always chasing someone around. Even humans have become the target of debauchery. Okay, cool. This is a meme. Now who's hot? I have to be really careful and rotate my pals accordingly. Fox Sparks helps, but I get super low and just barely, with my Mega Balls, manage to take the day. Of course, they're number 69. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be straight up, I'm very uncomfortable with that pal. I know what's really going on with that thing. I get it, yeah, I get it, it's a total meme, but still, still, you know that's not gonna stop anybody. <laughs> Speaking of not being unstoppable, uh, I continue to work on my base, and I do make a very good amount of progress on making the main structure. And yes, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is all starting to come together and look pretty good. Early on the next day, we start to head out in the daylight to get a good look at our progress so far. And sure enough, the main structure is really starting to come together. Of course, I can't really tell if it's going to look how I want it in my head until I got it finished. So let's go ahead and get everything in place. And right here, like right at this exact part, I gotta say a little pet peeve of me, it's really hard to place the triangles and then also place the stairs. You have to do them in the right order. It's tough, but obviously, as you guys can see, I did manage to make it work out pretty well. And I gotta say, this build is sick. I mean, look at this sweet Aztec style ziggurat we've got going on here out in the jungle. I love this thing. Perfect amount of space out in front, but it's still massive with these two towers and everything's fitting together perfectly. The backside is not in any way perfect and it does, I, I admit it looks ridiculous. We do have to fix that and give it a little bit more structure, but we'll do that soon. We hatch one of these large dark eggs and we get our very first Nox. Then finally in the daylight, we come back to this base and I gotta say it looks so good. This is exactly what I wanted. The sidewalls fit perfectly into the main building and the towers are right in the right spot. The front looks great with all the defenses and the walls and there's a ton of area here and I really couldn't ask for anything more. This thing is looking perfect and I'm so excited to spend the rest of my 100 days in here. The inside's even looking pretty good too and I immediately set down my bed and make this my new home. Of course, with such an amazing base, you are going to attract some jealousy, and we get our next raid. This time, we get this weird fire demon looking thing, and a whole bunch of Liz Punks. The Liz Punks aren't too bad, and we even managed to catch a few. The real thing that's scaring me is this Incinearm demon looking guy. However, hiding in my base and using my defenses effectively is actually working out pretty well. I got really low there, but with my Mega Balls and being able to shoot down at the enemies from up here, not only did I manage to pretty easily defend against this raid, but I managed to catch pretty much all these pals. I was very proud of it, and I could not have done it without this base. Turns out these defenses were perfect. Now it's time to start moving in our pals. That starts out with a feed box. And soon, I'm trying to figure out what kind of pals I want to help me build. Unfortunately, I see that these Lavanders actually have plus two handymen. So yes, unfortunately this will become the e-girl Lavander base. And yeah, that's disgusting, but I can't even be brought down. I am way too excited about how amazing this base came out and I am so ready to get this thing up and fully running. And since we're so bought and sold on the new base, that means destroying the old base. And the rebuilding process starts by making a ton of the PAL beds inside of the new base. I actually decide to set them all outside in this big open area. And it's not because I want to leave them outside, okay? They like this, I think. What I don't like is constantly being attacked in the middle of building my own base. The Free Pal Alliance, the biggest hypocrisy in all of Pal World, had started to attack. And I gotta be honest, right about here, I didn't know just how tough they would be. I knew that they were gonna be the next level up from the Syndicate, so I was getting a little scared. I decided to use my Lift Monk and go full blast, attacking as many of them as I could. And even though I have all of these big gates, it turns out they can get in through the doors, which is a little bit silly. But then again, so is the Free Pal Alliance. We managed to stay alive, and this beautiful base is still doing pretty good. Let's go to bed. The next day, we do officially move in all of the furniture we broke down from the other base, and finally managed to get Gigaspheres along with the new workbench. I take down the furnace, and the repair bench and pretty pretty quickly get weighed down. But I do manage to move this furnace over here as well as the sphere workbench and the PAL gear bench. 
Next, we add the logging camp, as well as the quarry on the outsides of the base. I decided to add the mill, as well as the crusher close to the water. I know that it doesn't matter because like the water doesn't affect it, but it just feels right. Finally, we add our little hot springs because the pals deserve it. Then we add this brand new building, the ranch. The ranch is where some pals have the ability to idly graze so we can get some new resources. Of course, finally, we already need some food and I decide to add the berry farms on top of the ziggurat. In my opinion, this actually is kind of the best part about the ziggurat. I like using the terraces to grow food and I really think it brings some life to the base. It's not just a big stone pyramid, but has different levels of really cool stuff. With this, I can officially say I am proud to be living in this brand new base. Now that we've officially got the base all set up and functional, there's a couple of small things I did have to fix. Unfortunately, the pals actually can't get up past these stairs, so I have to break them out. And quickly, they all rush in there to start building up the new farms, which was great, but it had other problems too. See, now they can't get all the way up to the top farms. So in the end, we have to actually extend the sides all the way out to make a little bit more room. It makes things a bit more crowded, but it still looks really, really good, I think. Now, the pals can get up to this layer as well as the berry farms up on the very top layer. Now that I feel like the base is pretty good, it's time to start working on our tools, like the shield and now the Giga Balls. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to farm a little bit more iron to get those gigas. Sure enough, we do, and we get it all smelted up. And while that's all cooking, I decide to get one little finishing touch on the top of the temple. Well, I guess technically two. When we finally get both of these statues built, I back off a little bit to get a good view of just how it looks. And I gotta say, with that sun setting in the background, that looks pretty amazing. Of course, no matter how good the base is, eventually, we are gonna resort to farming a little metal. That's basically what we do for the rest of the day. The next day, I decide it's time to fill out the interior of the ziggurat. We add our brand new workbench. And even then, we, we can't escape the farming. And here we are. The pal world's no fun without a few pals and a couple of arrows to the back of the head. We shoot this malpaca and manage to get a brand new capture. And then we have this malpaca, which is a brand new <clears throat> victim. But let's not get caught up in that. Don't tell my lawyers. Let's worry about these Giga Balls, which now we have 10 cooking up. While they're going, we go on another little hunt and find this Dinosome. Now, me and Lifmunk team up and unleash on this poor little pal. Remember, the Dinosome used to be a pretty intimidating pal. We managed to make pretty quick work of it right here, which makes me pretty happy. What makes me even more happy is that we find this fast travel, and right next to it, we find a new boss, the Pen King. For right now, though, we're not quite ready to take him on, and instead we decide to go and buy a ton of bone. Also, since that dinosaur didn't drop any wheat seeds, I decide to buy them here. Then, I see this little guy for sale. I decide we're gonna ship off some of the useless pals, I mean, uh, find some new loving homes for these little guys, and trade up to get this brand new cow. Finally, you can see why I wanted the pals to be able to get to the second level of the ziggurat, as we use those wheat seeds we just bought to make four brand new plantations. And later in the day, while we're out mining, we run into that exact same pack of tukutukus that had almost killed us once before. This time though, we're much more capable and we can pretty easily handle them without taking too much damage. We even catch one. As a reward, I get myself the cooking pot here on the top of the ziggurat. And yes, I, I, I placed a crooked. I had to redo it, you know me, the OCD. Getting that cooking pot, and the wheat plantation and the mill lets us upgrade our base once again. Now we can add some new pals. So I add two dinosums and I add a capper tea. All of these pals have level two planting, which should really help out with all those new wheat farms. I start today off by mostly unloading all the most essential stuff from my old base and transferring it all over to my brand new base. Then we finally get ourselves a mega glider. And of course, I load up on a ton of these gigaspheres. And apparently there's some gigaspheres that the syndicate wants because they come charging. Now we've handled the syndicate before, sure, but this time they're coming in full force. This is like an entire army. And while I'm having fun shooting them from up here, somebody left the door open and they come rushing in. So now it's a full on battle. The truth is whenever these type of attacks show up, it's pretty amazing. I mean, look at all this loot, mega spheres, shotgun shells, a ton of souls. This is honestly pretty great. We get our Mega Glider, which I didn't know this at the time, but this thing's actually pretty fun. And we go to check in on our flower production. 
This is what the wheat farm is all about. Combine this with our berries and we can make a substantial food, jam filled bread. Finally, I decide to do something a little bit exciting here and I head out to face Panking. Level 13, ice and water boss. We start out by, well, gunning down his friends. Probably wasn't a huge fan of that. So we decide to gun him down as well. While Lift Monk is an advantage, this is a boss, so we eventually have to pull her back. We get him pretty low, and I decide to throw out a Mega Sphere. Well, that's 50 That's 50% 50 on a uh, Mega. No way. <gasps> no way. And I gotta say, I like this guy. And I'm gonna end up using him a whole lot. The next day, we wake up to something even more exciting. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's just more iron farming. I, I lied to you guys. Luckily, we did get a level up, which we put into health, and we get up to 2k health, which is pretty good. What's even better is now we finally have some guns, the musket and gunpowder. I continue to do a little bit more exploring today, and I find this bridge, and at the end of it, I see a syndicate camp. I also see this poor little pal locked up in this cage, and I decide for once, I'm actually going to be the good guy. I send in our sinner arm, and he messes up these little low levels. Pretty soon, we've got them all cleared out. They drop some good loot, but more importantly, Little Pango is finally free. Well, I mean, free to be captured by me, but you know what I mean. Next, we see this Joltog, which I've never caught before. And once again, I get to be the hero and chase off all these thugs. Then, once again, I get to be the villain, and I capture him, stripping him of all of his freedoms. Yay! Finally, I see another camp, and I fly in with this brand new glider. I do really like how this thing helps you get from place to place. Now, I get a real test here to see just how good the Syndicarm is, and he's really messing them up. I gotta say, fire and dark is a pretty good power combination. Also, so is this Mousist, an ice version of Mao. Oh, and speaking of fire and dark combos, we see the Van Worms. Now, these guys are legit. This is definitely one of my favorite pals. It might even be my favorite most loyal pal. And this was the first time I ever really got to catch one. And yes, they resisted. And yes, I eventually had to break out Giga Balls. I was a little upset at first, but I had no idea just how much I would come to love these guys. They are the best. At first I was upset. They're essentially the same thing as Syndicarm, but I would learn. Oh, I would learn. The next day, I saw this like gang of monkeys outside of my base. And while they were a little bit of trouble, they did manage to get me a level up. And that's when I found it, the Van Worm Saddle. This truly was a game changer. I decided to go check in on my first base where I hatched our very first Rib Bunny. I don't care how tough you are, that's adorable. Also, I don't care who you are, this thing right here is amazing. I crafted it up as soon as I could. Speaking of hatching eggs, I decided to make an incubator in this base. Then we made this bad boy, the Condenser. This will allow us to take multiples of one pal and combine them to make an even stronger pal. For example, this Lambo with four other Lambos gets an upgrade to one of the strongest pals I have. And with that, we now have a pretty impressive little starter team. However, I will admit, only addendum I have to make is I change out the flyers. I'm gonna level up this Van Worm and get him up to speed because he's gonna be our new flying mount. The next mission involves Lift Monk. We're gonna catch multiples of Lift Monk and upgrade our little gunner. So we run out into the world and quickly start harassing the local population. That's right. Look over the edge, contemplate doing it. It's your only way out now. You should have taken your chance. Yeah, well, you don't have a choice now. We come across Flame Arrow, and I quickly teach that to my Van Weir, as well as a dark move, Poison Blast. We then go in and change out his air cannon for said Poison Blast. Pretty quickly, this guy's looking really good. And speaking of juicing up, we get Lift Monk Stone Cannon, and now even he's looking pretty good. And I'm looking pretty good too, because after those 10 Lift Monks, I get a level up, and we finally get our metal armor. Ooh, and we're really starting to scale up too. Next, we hatch a Daisy. Always good to get some electric pals. And I'm a little short on rock, so I decide to put in a rocky egg as well. Finally, we grab our saddle, and of course, we start to upgrade our Lift Monk. We, of course, take the one we have in our inventory and combine it with four other Lift Monks in a process that I'm absolutely sure, for legal purposes, is completely harmless. Either way, our Lift Monk gets a big boost in stats. On the start of day 26, I fill up these brand new giant chests with all of my kit. And if you're wondering, why am I stripping down naked and getting rid of all my gear? Well, one, I gotta get those YouTube views somehow, and two, it's to bring my weight down so that I can fully load myself up with ingots and bring them back here in a huge amount. 
Basically, I spend all morning just loading myself up to my full weight with ingots. Then I get a fuddler, a little disappointing, I'll admit. What's not disappointing is that I finally have enough ingots to get my metal armor. And oh boy, is it an upgrade. Now we just have to get the helmet, and pretty soon I'll be on a whole new level. Looking pretty good, I have to say. I think the helmet really complements the jawline, and that pink beard too. That van worm using Kittling 2 to cook all our ingots, looking pretty nice also. Finally, what's looking really nice is we take our first ever flight as we jump on the back of our van worm, high in the sky on our little mini dragon. I even perch atop the temple. And once again, at this part of the game, I was really feeling myself. And so to end that night, I go outside and try mounted combat. I gotta say, this is amazing. Yes, I know I'm a fire type and I'm blowing through these leaf pals, but still, this made me feel like I was literally on top of the world. I start to test out all my moves, one of which looks like it's almost like a shotgun. We have a poison one, which is pretty fun. And then flame arrow is just, well, it's just shooting flaming arrows. Now, normally I would go to bed every single night and try not to stay out too late, but I was really feeling myself here and I stayed out all night. I launched an attack from the back of my van worm and completely decimated this camp. I got to admit, this is so much fun. Just launching shots for free. And it was right about here that I realized this is something that Pokemon doesn't have. This is something that Ark doesn't even really have. This style of combat right here, it really is uniquely just a pal world thing. You can call it a copycat all you want, but I'm in. Then I get to fly back home and I get to see for the very first time my amazing Ziggurat from the air. And I gotta say, this is awesome. Speaking of awesome, Power World does still manage to be a little bit meme -y. Look at this goofy Relaxosaurus. It's kind of like if Barney grew up to be a stoner. I loved him at first sight. I knew right away I was gonna have to catch him. We even get the high quality pal oil, which is what we need to make our guns. Feeling pretty brave, I decided to go into another dungeon. And it was in here that I got to test out my Pan King. I'll admit, these are a little bit lower, only level five, but still, Penking was making a mess out of them. I was really impressed. We managed to catch some more daydreams and even level up. The level up got us the fluffy bed, which was exactly what we needed to get our next base upgrade. And we even found the boss, a lift monk. Now, of course, every time you come across a boss, you should definitely try to catch it. But even with this boss lift monk, I still had no intention of trading out my lift monk. I loved him. I also loved this loop moon. And I tried to buy them, even though a little bit tight on the funds. Oh well, these pals will make up for it. Luckily, he accepts innocent pals. That night, I became accustomed to Hangyu, maybe one of the most <laughs> messed up pals in the game, and that's saying something. Apparently, he's a pal that was uh, designed for hanging people, but also ripped them apart at the same time. He just sounds like a lot of fun. Anyway, I went to bed and definitely had nightmares about that pal. The next day, I started out by adding a ranch to the old base. I added Moose Arena so we could get some milk, as well as lamb balls for some wool. I decided that this base was going to be our permanent farm base. It was a good decision too. In no time at all, we were already getting wool and a little bit of milk on top of a, a, a ton of berries. Back at the base, we got a brand new hatch that was an elk and deer. Yeah, they can't all be winners. Pretty soon, I decide that my main source of food is gonna be pancakes, now that we have that milk. Speaking of a productive ranch, I go outside to see that our ranch at the main base is making a ton of eggs, a ton of berries, and a ton of wool. With that wool, we can start to make our fancy beds. I actually start to put these inside. Am I starting to treat these pals like, like they're equals? <laughs> nah, I was just doing that so we get another base upgrade. With more base upgrades, means we can have more slaves. Yay! And then, uh, speaking of hilarious, we got to see this guy who totally fits. Yeah, he's, he's comfortable, trust me. On the start of day 29, I decided to run around and just start beating up on the poor little pals, but it's the quickest way to level up. It's literally part of the core mechanic to be abusive of these pals. I can't help it. Another core mechanic of this game is having guns, and we're about to. The only thing holding us back is high quality pal oil. So I'm gonna fly out and try to find an area where I can acquire some. I'm going over into this new area that has the Catrice, and I also find this brand new pal, Rudy. Aw, she's adorable, especially when she's got axe wounds in her face. After that catch, I decide to run into this cave, which has two really good things. Number one, it has sulfur. You can tell it's sulfur, because in any video game, a giant yellow rock is always gonna be sulfur. 
And number two, it had the boss, which I was hoping to get high quality oil from. Sadly, it was a poor little level 11 T-Fant that didn't have any chance. We very quickly beat him up and managed to capture him right away. And sadly though, no oil. So we had to continue our journey. It was getting late and I probably should have gone home when I saw these guys, the Mammarists. They'll be important later. For now, we level up, but we'll spend that tomorrow. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a little treat on day 30. We wake up and spend our level on the power generator and collect a bunch of our valuables. We then head to the small settlement and sell all of these items. We need the money so that we can buy a few of these electric organs. Then, since it is day 30, I'm thinking to myself, well, we probably should have some kind of boss battle. I come across one of those Mammarists and I decide, why not? I know it's gonna be a tough fight, but I'm thinking that if I stay up in the air here, I might have an advantage. Now, of course, that was a little bit scary, but as long as I can dodge those and dodge these tornadoes, I have a massive advantage. This fire type and all of those fire attacks are really powerful. I try to first throw out my Great Ball, but when I see it's 5%, I know it's not gonna work out. I think 5% might have been the lowest percent I've ever seen. Even some of my Gigas aren't coming close. 14% isn't that much better. I have to blast through a few of those and then have to do even more damage to get him even lower. It ends up working out though, because we catch him. And what's important about that is that these guys give a ton of high quality oil. Now we can go back home and get the real prize of day 30, our very first handgun. Now it's makeshift, so I'm keeping my expectations low and the damage looks like it's quite a bit smaller, but when I get out in the field and test this thing out, I am headshotting for an insane amount of damage. I am wiping out all these little underlings for King Paka. In combination with Peng King doing a really good job, I'm finding out that I've become super powerful. Although I did realize something, pretty much only the headshots really do damage. With this gun, if you do body shots, you're only doing about a third of the damage and you're spending ingots to make the bullets, so it's a little bit expensive. But with all those lessons learned, it all pays off and we get ourselves a brand new boss, the King Paka. And what's even better, that night we come across another Lucky, this time a Gumas. The pistol makes quick work of him, but he still manages to sneak out. Not for too long though, a brand new Lucky in the bag. And I'm feeling so powerful with this new handgun that I just continue going. I decide to go full auto. Me and Liftmunk unleash a barrage of bullets right into this poor Katniss's face. Now, unfortunately, her hitbox is really small, and this is when I really start to learn the limitations of this handgun. You really have to make sure to always aim for the headshots in the weak spots, or else the gun just isn't that useful. Panking, on the other hand, extremely useful. Gigaspheres, on the other, other hand, are also very useful. Pretty quickly, we get our next catch. Now, on day 31, I decide it's time to go full send. We're getting all the bullets that we can get, although this takes forever, uh-oh. I decide to make a second furnace purely for making charcoal for more bullets. Then we head back out to harass the wildlife. We see these little kelpsies and I quickly start to catch them. We catch them in pairs because that's just how I do it. And then we skip through this beautiful lavender field. Uh, so carefree. Unfortunately, we did end up in a war zone and come across this next syndicate camp. I will be honest, I was kind of hoping that I could farm coarse ammo, but I guess farming a jolt hog crist is just as good. See, those Syndicate thugs were actually Grenaders, so no free ammo for us. However, we do get a free Large Dark Egg. We get back home, and I see that we've only made 20 rounds. Yeah, this is going to be a genuine nightmare. And I start to craft gunpowder and charcoal, but I'm realizing I have to be conservative with my ammo for this gun. Instead of blowing through the ammo, I think the better move would be to use our pal's abilities. And why not test this theory out on our biggest opponent yet? Yeah, that's right. I'm going for this level 38. And yeah, that's right. I'm getting my butt kicked. I have barely even made a dent on this guy and I'm using all of my pistol ammo and he is slicing through my pals. There goes Pen King. And of course, be because he's self-destructing, there goes Lamball. I throw out another fire type, hoping, hoping to do some damage, but I spend an entire day doing hardly anything. I have to retreat back to my base hoping that all my pals will come together and help fight, but even then, he's barely taking a scratch. 
he takes up my Van Worm as well as my Lift Monk and gets me super low. So I just have to retreat, call it a loss. Not quite a tragedy, but definitely a loss. 32, we finally get our Hip Lantern, which is really useful for going into mine shafts. Now we just need to find something useful for making all this ammo. I mean, we really need it. I then stumble across this new boss, an Azoro, a water dragon. And my Lambal apparently loves her. He goes rushing right in. Uh, she's less excited about him. Yeah, I know, forever alone, me too, buddy. But hopefully Lift Bunk will be a little bit better received. I'm thinking we have the type advantage, but I'm not 100% sure. The Ice Blast of Panking 100% has a type advantage, and we are shredding her health now. It got close, I'll admit, but we managed to catch her, and another boss is in the bag. I then come across a Bronze Cherry. This looks like another cool leaf dinosaur. With my Fire Pal, I decide to engage. Sure enough, Van Worm's Fire Attacks, and my Pistol, and the Gigaspheres make this high-level pal a pretty easy catch. And it looks like we're now capable of taking on some pretty strong opponents. But I might be getting in a little over my head as this flamethrower syndicate starts to wipe us out. Yeah, this might be a little bit too much for us. Sure enough, they wipe out Van Worm. And while I managed to win the fight, losing your flying mount is a huge pain in the butt. I free this little baristal, and that does make me pretty happy, but walking my stupid butt back home doesn't. We finally managed to get a hypersphere and the assembly bench, but I gotta get home before I can use them. On the way there, I find a Van Worm, and I definitely wanna catch these guys, because if I get four of them, I can upgrade my Van Worm. I get one of them, and I don't get the last one. Yeah, apparently I don't know my strength. We find this frozen egg, which I love, and one more Van Worm, which I also love. Unfortunately, we had to break out the Gigas, but like I said, it will be worth it at the end. Now, while I don't love walking around like this, the exploring has actually bared some fruits as we find a new area full of these relaxed sauruses. Unfortunately, a ton of my pals have been knocked out, so I'm not exactly super excited to fight, so I decide to <clears throat> bravely retreat to this fast travel and quickly run my scared little butt back home. Finally, a common egg that isn't an Aetheria deer, and the day is ended with a frozen egg. The next day, we make a brand new chest so that I can once again make a horrible, unorganized mess. I throw my entire kit in there, and my bare little buns can make another full run to get my whole weight full of raw ore. On the way back, I do hatch this little sweep. Then we get back out to do even more ore farming. But don't worry, guys. After I get back to base and load this up with ingots, we're going to do something much more exciting. More ore farming. <laughs> I got you guys. We even go to a brand new spot to do, yeah, you guessed it, even more ore farming. That's basically all today was. On the start of the next day, though, I decide to get dressed again and do something a little bit more decent. We head back out to the area we were exploring, and soon we start to catch new Rebunnies. With my new Van Worm, I was feeling much more capable, so I decided to catch another Relaxosaurus. I had to use Giga Balls, but I figured it was worth it for these guys. These goofy reject Barneys are just too much fun. And I quickly, oh, oops, I quickly headshot it and killed it immediately. Oh, oh well. You know what, we still get the high quality oil, so totally worth. We do manage to catch this one, so it's not a total fail. And then eventually we find this last one right here, right next to the fast travel. Another headshot gets him pretty low, and I probably could get him a little bit lower, but I decided I don't want to risk it again. We throw the Giga Ball, we get the catch, and I'm thinking about leaving. After all, this area is pretty much cleaned up. A couple of Syndicate kills get us our next level, and with it, we're able to get our Giga Shield and the production line, now, that's a big deal. And because we were so good about farming ingots, we already have enough. And the production line is really gonna help us make all these bullets. Unfortunately, in order to use it, we still need to get this electric generator. And so we head out looking for Sparkets or, or Jolt Hogs or any kind of pal that's gonna get me electric organs. But no luck, I'm looking all day and I can't find them. Then I find this black market merchant. A little bit creepy, I will admit. I don't like that smile one bit. However, he has some pretty good sales. I buy up a couple of his better looking pals, but I managed to save a few of my coins because this has given me an idea. I go back to the small settlement and decide I can save some time by buying the electric organs instead. And by the end of tonight, we can finally get our power generator. So, voila, everything's going great, right? Well, turns out the production line needs cement and cement takes forever. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even putting up with this. I'm going to bed. 
Luckily, the next day, we have a lot to look forward to as we're getting both of our production lines ready to go inside the base. Or at least that's what I thought. See, I should have been tipped off right here, right away. The fact that these pangles are struggling and glitching out like this, I should have known that this probably wasn't gonna work. Still, I was desperate to make this sweatshop deep inside my base. So I finished up both these production lines, even though the space was admittedly pretty tight down here. I tried to craft up some gunpowder, but noticed that nobody was working on these lines. I canceled the production of cement here, and I even caved and got more lavanders in my base since their handiwork was so high. And yet, nobody was working on this production line. Turns out, they were stuck outside. They couldn't fit inside the base. I was getting desperate. I even took a loot moon and tried to throw him at the belts, but they just couldn't fit in the gaps here. I threw a lavander inside of the gaps, and it almost seemed like they were trying to make it work, but there just wasn't enough space. I don't know if this is something that's going to get fixed in an update, or if production lines are just something that need a little extra space. But at this point, I just had to accept the truth that this wasn't going to work. In the meantime, as the night was setting, I decided to move my base upstairs into the next level and go to bed. And so, bright and early on the next day, I knew what I had to do. I broke down the production lines, and I had to move them out front. Man, sure enough, the second they were built, the lavanders started getting to work right away. Turns out it was just an issue of space after all. Now this does make me a little sad. It would have been nice to have these inside of the base, but I'm willing to make a little bit of a sacrifice for better function. After all, once I see how quickly the cement is being crafted, I'm sold. This is what we're gonna do. I'm so happy, even I decided to do a little slave labor. I mean, hard work. <clears throat> I decide it's time to craft up this Giga Shield, but I realize I'm gonna need some more ancient Civ parts, so I just decide to craft some ammo instead. We get our very first hyperspheres, which is pretty cool. By the end of the night, we're getting an ample supply of our jam-filled bread, which is pretty awesome. And with a thrumming, thriving base, I go to bed feeling pretty good about myself. And on the start of the next day, I decide it's time to farm another Pang King. We very quickly machine gun his face down and capture him. Then I decide to go to a new higher level area. Out here, I'm seeing even the most basic pals are like level 16 plus. These floppies are already proving to be a tough catch as they keep on breaking out of some of my spheres. On top of that, some of these pals are closer to level 25. So I know this area is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but I have to be careful. But I can't help myself. I see a new pal, and I gotta go after it. This Robin Quill is a leaf type, so we managed to do a pretty good amount of damage, and with one of my Giga Spheres, I'm hoping I can get my first catch. I didn't know it at the time, but this guy was gonna be very useful. Welcome to the squad, Robin Quill. Oh, and speaking of useful, in this area, you can just pick up handgun ammo off the ground. Pretty amazing. What's not amazing is the Free Pal Alliance. I thought you were good guys, and here they are harassing pals out in nature. You guys remind me of PETA. Speaking of terrifying, we end up going to this new area here that kind of looks like a swampland. I weirdly see the only pal is these pal called Globefins, and I try to catch a few. Turns out they are a little bit of a challenge, and when they come in these big packs like this, I have to be careful. I'm using Gigas and my best pals, but I only managed to snag a few of them. Pretty soon, I'm running out of Gigaspheres, and I kind of have to take this fast travel and retreat. Before I go though, I see that this is a pretty cool boss, a war sect. And next to it, it looks like a fey dragon. Yeah, this area might be pretty cool. We'll have to come back here. I also managed to catch another Van Worm, which makes me very happy. I think we're only one away from leveling up our Van Worm. And speaking of leveling up, we hit level 29. I put it into health because I feel like I have to. And then we find another pretty amazing boss, a Bushi. This guy, I got to admit, this guy's pretty awesome. He's like a fire samurai of the forest. He's amazing. With my water type Pang King, I'm thinking I have the advantage. But remember, fire is also good against ice. So his fire attacks are really good against my Pang King. And the ice attacks are no good against him. It's a pretty good fight. But at the end of the day, I do manage to get him pretty low. I use my very first hypersphere and grab one of my favorite pals in the game. This guy is awesome. Back at base, at the start of the next day, I want to get acquainted with these new production lines. I see what I can build, but I realize in order to make my Giga, I'm going to need more ancient parts. So we head out to do some boss hunting when we find this mineshaft. 
and inside, we find a Broncheri Aqua. Oh, she looks amazing. I whip out Pen King, because I figured he did so well last time, but this time we don't exactly have a huge type advantage here, so it's a pretty even fight. Pen King's getting really low really fast, eventually you have to pull him back. I throw out Catrice, and this is the first time I've ever used this pal, so I didn't really know what to expect. Unfortunately, it wasn't going super well. I managed to hang in there, and I kind of got lucky here because I think she may have gotten stuck. One hypersphere later, and now we have one of our best water and grass types, which is an area I've really been lacking. Also, we already can make the saddle for her. With stats like this, I mean, come on, 420, we know that we're going to have her in our party for sure. And so I'm taking a moment to get acquainted with my new best friend when these guys come to ruin the party. Clearly, they're just jealous of me and Broncheri's bond. And soon, they'll also be jealous of me being alive because after this wild affair going on here at my base, pretty soon, they're all wiped out. We grab some of their loot, and we grab a little bit more ore, and by the start of the next day, we're getting a ton of ores refined. We go to the top of the temple, and I grab all of my loot back again, and I head down to make that Gigasphere only to realize that we're still one piece short. So I quickly go and repair all my armor, apparently it's all been wiped out, and I managed to make our Broncheri Aqua Saddle. This is pretty amazing. Now to grab that last ancient sieve part, we head back to Chillette, and our fire type pretty quickly messes her up. To think, this boss used to be scary for us. Now we're rewarded with two things. One, the Giga Shield, and two, we finally get to ride our Broncheri Aqua. And I gotta admit, this is pretty amazing. Like, look at how huge this thing is. Look at my base. I mean, I've come pretty far in just the first third of this playthrough. It's pretty amazing. This game really does have me hooked. I head up top to pay my respects to Anubis, get my capture power upgraded, and then I decide it's time to upgrade some of my pals as well. All of these raids are delivering a ton of souls, which I immediately invest into Broncheri. I also give a little to Pang King since he's been doing so well too. Jeez, wow, speaking of raids, only one day later we get hit with these Lavanders. Level 30, and I definitely think that this was a glitch. Pretty soon they actually start spreading out, and I try to pick them off one by one. I really do love Lavanders, not in that way, because they're so good with handiwork. Unfortunately, I don't love how Power World is still a little bit buggy. Turns out this raid was kind of a weird glitch, and luckily it didn't ruin us too much. Also, pretty luckily, we get our Giga Shield now, and we get a few Hyper Spheres as well. We then get our Mud Dumb. I gotta admit, I really, really came to love this guy, I don't know why. Also, I came to love this new handgun that we were crafting up too. I then decided to show some of that love by helping my guys make all the cement. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I immediately abandon them to go do my own thing. Pretty soon, we switch out the makeshift handgun with our better handgun. Gotta be honest, I think we're gonna need it. The start of day 40, we head out and we start to queue up a ton of the new ammo for a new little pistol but it probably won't be ready in time, so I even try to help out to speed up the process. After all, we have to face our level 40 challenge, this bad guy, the War Sect. I don't have a huge advantage here with Aqua Cherry, but come on, this is my brand new mount and I really want to try her out. He's just too tanky. I have to pull Aqua back and throw out good old Van Worm. It is getting close, I'm not gonna lie, my health bar was looking real suspect here, but Van Worm's fire type has full advantage here, and even as tanky as Warsect is, and with both my health and almost all of Van's, with one Hyperball, eventually we can get one of the best catches in this game. Seriously, I love this aesthetic. This guy looks amazing. He's super strong, and he has the most defense and health I've ever seen in a pal. Definitely better than Lamb Ball at being a damage sponge, that's for sure. I decide to continue our Day 40 streak by going after Relaxosaurus Lux. This is a Relaxosaurus that is dragon and electric type, and I gotta say, it has a pretty sick mohawk. I'm also kind of jealous of the type advantage here. Aqua Cherry has no hope. I really want to get to use her more, but she just isn't able to shine just yet, so I have to pull her back pretty quickly. And that's when it hits me. Our brand new War Sect is Earth type, which will be super effective against the electric type Relaxosaurus. Right in this fight, I start to develop one of my new strategies. See, War Sect doesn't do too much damage, but he's super tanky. And pretty soon, I can slow down the fights, which give me a ton of time to throw in a Hyperball and catch Relaxosaurus Rex, another addition to our brand new squad. And this new five man, I have to admit, is looking pretty good. Grass and Water, Electric and Dragon, Earth, Ice, Fire, and Darkness. We're just missing regular, and like I said, I don't need that. But just before the day ends, 
I decide to really amp up our day 40 and go after another boss. This is a pure dragon type. And no, I won't be saying her name and butchering it, because uh, I don't even have a hope. Elfindra? Yeah, that's about the best you're going to get out of me. Speaking of uh, getting the best out of somebody, our brand new Reluxosaurus Rex pretty much stock goes one to one with this boss. At the very end of the fight, I can pull out Warsect, who super slows down the battle. We can get the pal down to the perfect amount of damage and give me tons of time to land another hypersphere. And as I head home on the end of this victorious day, I gotta admit, I totally understand this game. It has really enthralled me and I just can't stop playing it. It's so much fun. Back at home, I see our new little dragon type looking pretty good, but I think I like my team the way it is. So after engaging those high level monsters, I go after my biggest threat yet, a little level four chicken. Yeah, so this is the part of the game that I don't know if I really understand. So you can go around and catch any type of pal, even these little level threes, and they all give you the exact same amount of XP. So if you go and grind little level fives, release these tiny little pals, just get the super most basic pals, no matter what level you are, you will get the maximum amount of XP and really be able to power level. Of course, you are cut off at a 10 out of 10 limit, but still, that lets you get a huge amount of these really low level pals. So the rest of today is spent grinding out all these low level pals, getting a huge amount of XP. And yes, that means even releasing this little Tuki Tuki, as much as I hate these guys. And of course, catching the little Celerays too. Pretty soon, we get that level up we've been grinding for, and now we can get a high quality hot springs for the pals I actually like. We get up the next day and set up the high quality hot springs right next to the other hot springs, and I get ready for my biggest challenge yet. It's just farming ore. You guys should know, every time I tee you up, I'm just gonna say it's farming ore. I do manage to get another Dumba, which I do love, and we're right back to farming more ore. And that's literally all we did the whole day. Speaking of farming, we get some wood, and we even hatch a Surfent. With all this done, we can finally get our main food source, pancakes, and with all that wood, we can finally get a ton of hyperspheres. Not that we're gonna use them though, I'm still running around using my basic spheres to catch all these little guys. I promise you, I am not enjoying beating up on these little pals. This is a game mechanic, I swear the game is making me do this. However, uh, my conscience does start to get the better of me. On day 44, I decide I should go pick on some guys my own size, and we start to head into the area that is a higher level. Hopefully here we'll find some more threatening pals. This is the Free Pal Alliance area, where things are level 20, bare minimum. I go around and I try to catch this new pal, a Cinemoth. But even the Mega Balls are mm, kind of making this a little bit hard. I have to run through almost all of them. But finally, finally, we managed to catch a Butterfly. When I was a kid, I could do this with a net. What is going on right now? I decide to take my anger out on one of these Free Pal Alliance squads, but why do I have to do it? Let Bron Cherry have some fun. And sure enough, she's wiping them out. I decide to upgrade to Hyperspheres as I catch this Robin Quill, and then I get myself hyped up to go after our very first Free Pal Alliance camp. I gotta say, Relaxosaurus and I, we love the smell of crispy Free Pals in the morning. We wipe everybody in this camp out pretty easily, and then we can free this little Vixie. What are you doing out here? This is way too high level for you. I then decide to jump down on top of these bird types. They never see the attack coming from above. And pretty soon, we get our very first Scout Claw, an iconic pal in this game. We head into another cave, and I see a wild Grintail. And after a little fight, Warsec manages to kill it. No, oh, well, not exactly what I wanted, but okay. Next up, we see a Felbat, and I've never caught one of these before, so I definitely don't want Warsec to go too crazy here. I pull him back and decide to use the Hyper Ball, and pretty easily, maybe a little overkill, we managed to catch our very first Felbat. And you know me, I'm always gonna do them in pairs, so we get our second one right away too. We're rewarded with a quick little level up, and I decide to put it in health, and I'm starting to get really beefy here. Now, we can get ourselves a weapon assembly line. This is a big deal for all our guns and ammo. Then, we find another wild Catris. Catris kind of reminds me of that girl in school who made way too much fan art of Has Been Hotel, but either way, we decide to capture her and take her back home. Next up, we see Lizabee, and they immediately go to self-destruct at my war sec. Lizabee kind of reminds me of that girl in high school who thought she was popular, but definitely was not. Either way, I still decided to capture one, at least the one that didn't explode in my face. Then we move further on to a pal that I actually love. Loot Moon and Lavander are those two pals that are really easy to catch and have like two handling, so they are great on the assembly line. I definitely make sure to capture every single one of these I can. 
Pretty soon, we get deep into the cave and find the floppy boss, level 27. And Morsec does a great job distracting these guys so I can shoot them in the back of the head and then get some easy captures. Then we wake up the boss and I decide to shoot her right in her beautiful little smiling face. Aww. We throw out a hypersphere which only gets to 49%. I gotta say the hypersphere is a little underwhelming. And when it comes to the next spheres, I had no idea what I was in store for. But I was pretty happy to get a large scorching egg and a little free handgun ammo just lying out on the ground. We find this fast travel right in the middle of this free pal alliance battleground. I, again, I cannot stress how weird it is that the free pal alliance is just poaching pals left and right. That's when I find out that this area is actually called Hypocrite Hill. Yeah, no kidding. I also find out that there's a Polita just across the water and decide to go after her. She's full grass type, so you guys already know I'm setting out Van Worm to start the fight off. And I gotta admit, for having such a good type advantage, this was getting a little bit challenging here. Normally, I'm not really in love with these fairy type, flowery type Pokemon designs, but this pal has something really special about it. I just really like her. The fight was going on, for a long time, and Van Wehr was putting up some good damage, but soon we had to switch out for Warsec. There's no type advantage here, which is exactly what I want. It gives me plenty of time to make sure that we don't do too much damage, and after a couple quick rolls and, and some very cautious play here, making sure that I don't do too much damage, but also making sure I don't take too much damage, a couple of hyperspheres later, we're able to get this 28 Petalita. Looking pretty good. With level 3 growing, she's going to be the new caretaker of all of our farms. We then head back to the small settlement. And I decide to sell all my valuable materials that I've gotten from all my boss fights. And on the way back home, I find what is probably my favorite Lucky of the entire playthrough, this big, beautiful Pangol. Pretty quickly, we grab him up, and I gotta say, this guy was an amazing catch. I turn out to really love this guy. Lucky and motivational leader, unfortunately, I'm a little too high level to be running around with a Pangolette, so he's gonna be our dedicated waterer of all of our crops. We then head out, and spend the rest of the day finding van worms. I want to catch as many as I can so that I can use the condenser and try to power up my van worm. Then I also decide to catch some Relaxosaurus rexes because I want to get the pal oil as well. Pretty soon we get ourselves a level up and yeah, 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 I know I'm only going into weight and damage, but I really think that this is the optimal way to build your character. Let me know in the comments if I'm crazy here. At the end of the day, we head over to this camp where these syndicate thugs are beating up on this Relaxosaurus. I thought for a second I was rescuing him, but then he turns on me, so unfortunately, yeah, sorry Relaxosaurus. Look, if the ATF asks, that was self-defense, he was coming right at me. I see another boss, crank out a few more hyperballs, and then I see this. One of the vans we caught has swiftness, ooh. I decide to test it out to see just how fast it is, because I'm not super excited to abandon my loyal van worm, but I see just how fast this guy is and I realize, unfortunately, I'm going to have to trade out van worms for this fast one. I'm a little bit happier when I realize that I can actually get a refund of all the souls that I invested in this one. We grab our hyperspheres and our arrows and we get ready for day 47. Before we can do anything, we need metal for our assembly line, so you know what time it is, guys. Now I've heard you can make an ore base, but I've also heard it's a little bit glitchy, so this is the best we can do right now. We get ourselves a flower, like a ton of flour, and we get ourselves a brand new farm full of cows for milk. That lets us make an insane amount of pancakes. That's right, everyone in the base gets pancakes, while I get to farm more ore. But hey, at least I'm rewarded for all my struggles, because finally we get the weapon assembly line. I tried to set it out and give it a little bit of space. I might be moving this one a little too far away, but after what we did before, I'm not taking any chances. We get to upgrade our base once again to the max level of 15 pals. We also get this large egg hatched into a bushi. Pretty cool. On day 48, we replace that egg with a large dark egg and we head out. This mine shaft here is underneath a waterfall. It's a little bit difficult, but you guys can see here on the map where you can find it. You head inside here, you get Fangalope. She kind of looks like an ice or a water reindeer, but she is in fact a normal type. This means that our dark type van should be pretty effective against her. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I have 100% specced out my van worm to be all fire moves, so we don't have like a huge type advantage here, but we do have the level advantage after all, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Until I see this move. This is Acid Rain. This is a water move that I hate, but I would soon come to love by the end of this playthrough. Eventually, I send out Warsec. Again, he basically just lets me do a lot of damage myself, and pretty soon, we can throw out just a Gigaball. We managed to catch this boss, Fengalope. Not too bad. 
And that is when I saw, for the first time, Mount Obsidian. I was excited to fly there. Well, until my flying mount got killed. Yeah, I didn't even notice he was taking so much damage. Luckily for me, loyal old Panking is here to save my butt. That doesn't really solve my problem here. I'm stuck in the middle of this jungle with no flying mount. I managed to fight my way back to the fast travel, but my plans to explore Mount Obsidian have been dashed. Back at home, I craft up a little more ammo, and then I even help out, because again, I cannot stress, I'm a good guy, guys, I promise. Eventually, though, we get Van Worm healed up, and we head back out to find this, our very first huge dragon egg. And on the way to Mount Obsidian, we find another huge dragon egg. I'm already loving this brand new biome. Turns out, we weren't actually inside of Mount Obsidian proper. By going just around the border, we managed to find a ton of huge eggs. I think we found three on one day. Also, we find some new pals. This is a Kelpsy Ignis. It's basically a Kelpsy, but, but on fire. And even on the outskirts here, this little guy is 27. We managed to get him down pretty low because we have type advantage, and we managed to catch him pretty quickly. But I'm realizing pretty quickly that this area might be above our level. Uh, speaking of above our level, this little Kelpsy is managing to break our hyperspheres. So we're definitely treading in some new area here, and we gotta be careful. Finally, we managed to catch, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know if it was worth it. It was a real struggle. The next Kelpsy, I'm not messing around. I go straight to hyperspheres, and luckily this time, we catch her pretty quickly. As I'm going around, I see two things. Pretty high level pals, right around level 30, and a ton of these eggs. I get 10 out of 10 vans, which is pretty amazing, and I get a large scorching egg. But it's getting late, so I have to be careful here. I'm getting a little greedy though. I see another huge dragon egg, and I decide to stay out for just a little bit longer until I start to see that I'm hot. I'm getting too close to Mount Obsidian, and I don't have the right armor to get over here. I see this one last new pal, a Wixen. I have type advantage with Panking, and I stand just outside of the border where I'll be taking heat damage, and I try to lure them closer to me. But it's not going well. I'm still hot. They're still doing a lot of damage, and I pretty much have to throw Pen King out as like a sacrifice. Then hop on Van Worm and I get out of there. No catch this time. What's worse is my armor's damaged, I don't know where I am, and I'm just fleeing trying to find a fast travel to get home. I do see this cool pal though, a Cognito. It looks like a Plague Doctor Crow, and yeah, this pal is pretty cool too. Even though I'm a little bit desperate right now, it's only level 16, so I try my luck. I stop and try to get a brand new catch. I hear him whisper in my ear, it's nothing personal, kid, as he teleports behind me. And I'm going to admit, it was a little bit scary. But pretty soon, we managed to get him low enough, and we get a quick capture here too. But I'm definitely not out of trouble yet. Like I said, I'm still blind, I'm hungry, my armor is low, and I have to find my way home. That being said, as I'm flying, I get a good view of the entire map. I see the Ice Mountain on one side and Mountain City on the other. I'll have to find out later though, because as soon as I find this fast travel, I'm taking the long, long trip all the way home. I put down an incubator, and the next morning, I put down another. After collecting all these huge dragon eggs, I decide I really want to invest in trying to hatch a ton of them. I make about four incubators and start to load them all up with these huge dragon eggs, and I'm excited to see what comes out of them. Unfortunately, I am going to have to wait an entire two hours. And what's even worse is, as I'm putting down this tomato farm, we get a raid back at the old base. Now, if anybody tells you that Power World is a little bit busted, yeah, they're not lying. Half of this raid got stuck on an arch. This isn't a building that I made that they got stuck on. This is something that is in the world that is not working properly. Not that I'm complaining too much, though. I pretty quickly take advantage of it and get some free headshots. I'm trying to get these Zapdos-looking guys to a low enough level so I can get a catch. And pretty soon, we do in fact get a brand new electric-type bird. As I'm flying back to my base, I see something pretty cool. Just randomly out in the world, there's like a whole group of syndicate thugs trying to poach this giant mammarist. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going too well for the poachers. I show up and I decide to finish off the kill myself. I mean, what did I say? No, 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 I, I, I show up, I mean, I, I show up, I show up and rescue this mammarist. Yeah, yeah, I show up and uh, help out this poor, innocent mammarist. Unfortunately, this poor girl doesn't realize that I'm actually a hero and a knight in shining armor, so she does resist a little bit. We craft up some more hyperspheres, and I even make a dedicated large chest just for holding all these eggs we've been finding. I research up the heat resistant armor because I'm going to get ready to go back to Mount Obsidian. I was having a ton of fun there and I want to get even more eggs. Of course, metal armor takes, yeah, you guys guessed it. So now, 
My task is obvious. I have to get that heat resistant armor. Unfortunately, that means we get even more lovely farming. I know, so much fun. But it all pays off. We get our heat resistant armor, and pretty soon we're safe to spend day 50 exploring Mount Obsidian. Now, I say safe because I mean we won't be taking heat damage, but still, this area is way above our level. However, all these eggs are a little too enticing. What's also kind of enticing is that blueprint. It's an epic handgun. Yeah, I'll take it. Pretty soon, we get into Mount Obsidian proper. I grab another egg, fast travel, and I see our very first brand new pals. At first, I play it cool. I'm a little coy. No, I'm just here for the obsidian, guys. Don't mind me. But I can't hold myself back for too long, and I start a fight with these new fire ponies, the Pyrans. Now, I'm hoping my Panking will have the water type advantage, but remember, fire is still effective against ice, so we have to be careful here. We managed to get the first one pretty low. We throw out a Giga, and we get a little bit lucky here, because this one manages to capture. Now, I'm going to try my luck again and get the second one. I gotta say, these Pyrans have a cool move when they shoot across the land and leave like a trail of fire. That's pretty sick. My luck doesn't continue, as the Gigasphere just doesn't hold this one. I have to resort to Hypersphere, but I have no problem with that. Next, we see another pack of those Wixens, and this time I'm feeling a little more lucky. So I jump in. Unfortunately, the catch rate is getting pretty slim. Even Hyperspheres are only 25%, and they keep on breaking out. This means that I have to keep the fight pretty intense, and I accidentally wipe out these first two. I then see one alone, and I think that this might be a better chance to actually get a catch. I'm fighting all by myself. I'm running through hyperspheres. Another. Then another. Then another. I'm serious, I go through like 70 of these things. Eventually though, we get our very first Wixen. Whew, it was crazy. Speaking of crazy, I see my very first Reptor row. This is one of my favorite designs, I have to admit. And at level 35, this was gonna be a real challenge. I bring up Pan King, but unfortunately, even the type advantage isn't saving us, and he's getting super low. We keep on fighting all the way into the night, and eventually, I gotta call my guy back. I call out Warsect, which I know has a type disadvantage. At this point, I just need him to tank a little bit of damage so we can get a couple of throws in. I have to be careful here, because we don't have that many hyperspheres left. Luckily though, the pocket pair gods are smiling down on me, and I managed to get this catch. And I gotta admit, this guy I love. I grab a little bit more sulfur and decide to push my luck just a little bit more. I'm not really looking for any fights since it is getting kind of dark. At this point, I'm just trying to find a fast travel when I find a Blazonaut level 49. Whoo, better be careful there. No, thank you. I keep on flying around until I see this, one of the calderas filled with lava. And I see a brand new pal in there. He looks cool and I definitely want to go after him, but I decide I should definitely play this safe. After I find this fast travel, I get right back home. On day 51, I start out by putting all my eggs away and realize that I've got quite a little collection here. I was one egg short of a dozen. Ah, oh, too bad. What's really nice is this epic handgun, which I will absolutely be making, but I'm a little distracted. I just found this massive caldera and I am so excited to go looking at it in the daytime. It doesn't disappoint. I am loving this thing. A little bit weird that there's megaspheres floating on the lava, but I'm not gonna ask questions. I'm still a little intimidated here, but I don't wanna take too many fights. I'm just taking in all the level design, which I gotta say, for early access, Pocket Pair really nailed it here. I then spot these guys just hanging out on lava, and I'm like, oh, you can just walk on lava? No, no. You cannot, in fact, walk on lava. Take it from the captain. So after realizing that these guys are clearly hacking walking on lava, I keep moving on, I keep grabbing more eggs, and eventually, I'm trying to get to the very top of the mountain. I get this huge dragon egg, and turn around to see the entire level, again, the scale and detail of this world in early access, top notch, no notes. I finally get to the very top of the caldera where I find a blueprint for cold resistant armor as well as finding a tower. Now I think that this tower, the ethereal Pyran Brotherhood tower, I think this one is a little above my level. So I grab the fast travel and stay clear of it for right now. In the process, I find this new biome, which kind of almost looks like a desert oasis. I decide to investigate it as well. I see this massive statue of Anubis, and I see a couple of cool abilities here as well. One of which is the epic move, Lightning Bolt, for 150 power. Yes, please. I see that my Van Worm has learned Firestorm, which I am super into. But of course, I'm more excited to get Relaxosaurus Lux upgraded with this brand new 150 power Lightning Bolt. This move is almost twice as strong as our second best attack. 
I'm already feeling the scaling kicking in. And I know I should probably go home, but I decide I find this level 35 Bushi. I get so excited, I completely don't recognize that I am a 10 level disadvantage in this fight. I start to get absolutely shamed here, and I have to run away and let Relaxosaurus take all the damage. Eventually, he does manage to win the fight, so I guess the Lightning Bolt was pretty effective, but I'm gonna have to run away. One piece of good news is we get a Univolt, which is nice, because I don't have that many Electric Pals. And another piece of bad news is I don't have nearly enough ingots or pal oil to get this gun. Yeah, that's 225 ingots. <laughs> yeah, guys. So we head to bed, and of course, we get to a ton of farming the next day. I get myself completely loaded up to my weight maximum. By the way, the fact that you can fast travel at full weight is a little bit weird. But still, I only manage to get half of the ingots I need. I do hatch another van, which gives me the idea. It might be time to upgrade this van worm, which I do. Then I check in to see that I'm going to have almost 500 bullets coming for this new epic gun. This is pretty exciting. Sitting around and uh, uh, farming metal all day? Okay, a little less exciting, I'll admit. I go to bed after what was a pretty routine day. However, I know that that handgun is in the future, so I'm willing to put in a little extra work. The only thing we need now is pal oil, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of poaching. After going to that high level area, I'm thinking that I should be pretty ready to take on this guy. So I go after the king of the forest, the Bob Smammerist. Now my Van Worm does have a type advantage here, and I did just upgrade him by condensing him, but he is no match for this level 38. He's putting in as much damage as he can, but pretty soon, I gotta pull him back. I try Relaxosaurus, and I gotta say, he's pretty impressive, but even his best move is only tickling. He throws out a combo of Electric Bolts and Tri Lightning and even Dragon Breath, but still, it's barely doing any damage. I throw out Brana Cherry, and she's doing as much as she can too, but still, this guy is a beast. I'm worried that we might have to run away again as the third one of my high-level pals needs to be called back. Finally, I call out Warsect. This guy is always my ace in a hole and helps me finish out the really big battles. I'm hoping he can help me here too. We get this Mamorous down to two damage, we use Hyperspheres, and we get a little bit of luck. Finally, we get that mega boss captured. That's kind of a big deal for me because I've been worried and running away and kind of cowering from this guy since day one. To bring it all the way around and actually finally capture this guy is kind of a big achievement for me, and I'm really into this. I'm also really into this improved furnace and these refined tools. This Mamorous does look pretty impressive, so I just bring him out so that he can be our dedicated planter along with Polita. And uh, yikes, I don't even know if he really fits in this base. Jeez, dude. However, I'm not done yet. I'm gonna go out and take out his little underlings. I'm gonna start farming Mamorist for all their pal oil. While that last fight was pretty intense, this guy is not only not a boss, but he's seven levels lower. Pretty quickly, we managed to take him out and grab his pal oil. I spend the rest of the day just going out and capturing as many of these Mamorists as I can. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain to try to actually catch them, but it's better to catch them and get the XP as well, rather than just kill them for their loot. Now, it is not better to miss three hyperspheres and then still have them break out, but that's just the captain special for you guys. A little extra cringe. This one though, we didn't manage to save. We killed him and then still ran into his power bomb after he was dead. I don't really know about that one. What I do know is I was excited to see this Grintail boss. It was level 17, so I was actually gonna have to be a little bit careful here. I didn't want to do too much damage, but at the same time, a boss could probably still mess me up. But all I had to do was throw out a couple here, kitty kitty kitties, and we get our next new catch. That was good. Seeing that we still don't have enough mats to make this handgun, not so good. So, to cheer me up, I go to pop a few of the dragon eggs and see this Jorman Tide Igneous. Two of them, actually. These guys are amazing. Pal number 101B, this guy has level four kindling. Perfect for our new improved furnace. On the start of the next day, I see that it's level 43 to get his saddle unlocked. I definitely want to do that, but it is going to take some time. So in the meantime, I'm focused on getting the improved furnace set down. I decide to set it over on the right side of the base. Pretty soon, we're going to be able to make refined ingots. For right now, I'm taking out my Jormantite Igneous because he is going to be our power cooker. Yeah, that's right. He's making pancakes. A fire dragon is making my pancakes. Are you jealous? 
I head back out to the volcano and then the oasis looking to see if I can find any coal. Sure enough, I get really lucky. It only takes me about half a day to find this resource. And in fact, I find a whole patch of it. I get myself fully loaded up and then I manage to even find this little fast travel and get right back home. Upgrade my base and start making our very first refined ingots. This level of tech is much better, by the way. It's much better to farm refined ingots because their gear lasts so much longer. After getting the refined metal pick, this really helps us out and we don't have to do nearly the amount of farming that we did. We still need just a little bit more pal oil, so I do have to go out and get this mammarist. But while I'm out here, I do see that there's this new boss that I haven't seen yet. A quivering. Not exactly sure what this is. Soon I get inside and realize that it is a pure dragon. I send out my van worm and we start fighting. Unfortunately, if you have a pal that has two types, it technically has two advantages, but it also has two weaknesses. Because my van worm is also dark type, the dragon type moves are super effective against him. So I have to be careful here. Luckily, this is only a 23 and it isn't too scary. Pretty quickly, I managed to use a Mega Sphere and get a pretty lucky catch here. Now we have enough pal oil that makes me pretty proud. This next thing here, yeah, I'm not so proud of this. I actually go and find this sweet papa, shoot him in the head a few times, then capture him while his little sweet babies are still asleep. I'll admit, it makes me a little happy knowing that when they wake up, they'll be orphans. Okay, bye guys. I don't have any time to worry about that though. The start of the next day, I'm getting my epic handgun crafted. Uh, speaking of epic, this guy is just too epic. He like doesn't fit in the base. I kind of feel bad for him at this point. I also feel really bad that we're cooking mammarist meat right in his face. It can't be pleasant. I also decide to make a chest purely for schematics. That's good. Going out and having to do a whole nother mining run, not so good. Like I said though, we probably won't have to do this nearly as much. At least that's what I'm hoping. We'll go out and find a little bit more coal when we come back to a beautiful 562 damage pistol. Yeah, that's more than double our 250 old pistol. I'm pretty happy about this one, not gonna lie guys. Also, we're grabbing ourselves some hyperspheres. They still take regular ingots, so it is gonna require a little bit more farming to get these. Now we can use that wood to get 17 more hyperspheres. The only thing we need now to get more is cement, so I have to make that as well. I quickly wanna head out because I realize that in this game, you don't wanna just sit around and farm all day because that'll take you forever. The best way to progress in this game is to capture pals, especially new pals. I get this huge dragon egg, and then find this guy, the 29 Beacon Boss. Now I've caught one of these guys before, it would be pretty amazing to have the boss. Also, I have a type advantage here with my ground type, and Warsec is doing a pretty good amount of damage. Unfortunately, he's doing a pretty good amount of damage to me too. The fight takes a while, but that's just fine. With Warsec on my team and all that health, I've got all the time in the world. Pretty soon, we managed to catch this beacon and get the first boss kill on this guy. I decide though, why not be a little bit more adventurous, and I keep heading up north. I go through this bamboo forest, and then eventually get all the way to these northern islands. Now the truth is, these northern islands, they turn out to be just like new beginning areas, so there's nothing too exciting here. I find this level 23 Felbat, and I decide why not, let's take him on. Unfortunately, this poor little girl is just a little too weak for us. I whip this pistol out, and I'm doing huge chunks of damage really fast. The DPS on this thing is pretty crazy, especially if you could land some headshots. That, coupled with how strong Van Worm is now, uh, yeah, this, this Felbat didn't have a chance. At the very end, I try to catch her, but we're just too strong for our own good, and unfortunately, we knock her out. So I continue on to explore these islands. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking that I'm a high-level guy going back into the starter areas just to bully all these pals, but, um, ah, oh, geez, shoot, that's... That's pretty much exactly what I'm doing. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'm going to head back to Mount Obsidian, beat up on some guys my own size. On the north side of Mount Obsidian, I find this weird ruins of this, like, castle area. I gotta say, I'd really like to know the lore of Pow World. There's a bunch of these ancient ruins, but also these weird futuristic structures as well. I really wish MatPat was still around to give us some game theories on what's going on here. It's sad. I really am going to miss that guy. I remember growing up watching Game Theory and Film Theory and R.I.P. MatPat. Gone but never forgotten for sure. By the way, he's just retiring. He's, he's not dead, in case you guys don't know. Anywho, at the end of the day, I go back and I start hatching my eggs and loading them up with these huge dragon eggs. Then I get this huge raid on my beginner base, which is not so sick. And unfortunately, a lot of these are fire pals, so they start to completely light up my base. I'm trying to get a couple of cheap catches here. I managed to get a few of the Liz Punks until this Incinerarm completely messes me up. 
I'm super low. I have no idea what's going on. I'm losing pals left and right. My entire base is all incapacitated, but I'm still thinking I might have a chance to catch this new pal, an Incineroar knock, and I do manage to catch him. The uh, state of this base, not so lucky. All of my pals have been obliterated, and I even have some of my structures on fire. I find out at the start of the next day that you can assign a water pal to actually extinguish the fires, which is good, and I managed to save almost all the buildings. Back at base, we managed to finish up on the cement, and I think I can get spheres, except, yeah, no ingots. But I'm done farming. Let's go do a little bit more exploring for right now. Pretty soon, I see that there is a tower on top of this icy mountain, but I also see that there's a tower on top of this smaller hill, and I'm wondering if that's the one we should go to next. Also, I just happened to stumble across this desert, which turns out to be a pretty important area if you're in the mid-level of your gameplay. I find a bunch of new pals here, including this guy, a Dig Taurus. Clearly, he's a Bowser fanboy, and he's really committed to the cosplay, and I can respect that. So I take a little time out of my day to stop and try to catch one. I try to use a Giga Ball, but it turns out I'm gonna have to use a little bit more. It's a good thing I caught him, because I was getting down to my last three. While I'm here, I find out that I can get sulfur and also farm Tuki Tukis for gunpowder. In addition, this desert has coal and metal. It's an amazing place to farm if you're in the mid game, which I pretty much am. Anubis is here. I also managed to free our little barista. And this place has dumb muds. This desert is a pretty amazing place that I really suggest you guys go and try to find if you're at the mid game when you're playing Power World. Unfortunately, I can't stay here for too long. I have my eyes on the horizon because I want to get to that tower before my next big event. And I'm finding that I might have to go down and then up to get there. I catch another Dig Taurus and get another level. This unlocks ultras, as well as the next assembly line, circuit boards, and carbon fiber. I also get a little peek at the bad boy himself, Anubis, but I know I'm not ready for it yet. After all, this desert is kind of kicking my butt. So I have to make a quick retreat back to the forest and get out of here. Bright and early on the next morning, we head out to GoFin's Turf, where these guys still scare me to death. I quickly move on and find this little pal, Gorate. You know me, normal types aren't usually my favorites, but these guys are pretty cool. And a couple gigas later, we managed to catch us a pair. However, I gotta keep moving on. I'm trying to get to the next tower, the Free Pal Alliance. On the way there, I find these bad boys. These pandas are amazing. And even though we're getting up to a higher level area, the type advantage and my general obsession with these guys means that I just can't help myself. I have to stop and try to catch them. But I can't hang out and look at them for too long. I have to keep on moving. I get to a high point here and just take a look around the entire scenery. And I gotta say, once again, Pal World is amazing. It turns out you really can go to all these locations. And with a flying mount, this whole place seems so open, even at this massive scale. I quickly make my way to this tiny little peak and start flying into the snow. But of course, I quickly see that we're gonna need cold armor or we might be in trouble here. However, the snow here isn't too big, so I can take most of the damage and get right up to the Free Pal Alliance Tower. Of course, right next to it, as always, there's a fast travel, so I managed to get my way back home, get my schematics for cold armor, and find out that, yeah, you, you guys already know what's going on here. After spending the entire day farming and cooking up all this metal, we do get enough to finally make that set of armor. But maybe more important than the armor, we get a full stack of pancakes, and we even get some omelets with those tomatoes that we grew in the other base. Speaking of other base, the Pyro Brothers come out trying to raid us, but I gotta be honest, with this epic handgun, we are just wasting them. Like seriously, three headshots each and these guys are gone. They drop a ton of medium souls too, so I'm not complaining. And we're rewarded by getting that cold resistant metal armor. We pop open one of these frozen eggs to get a sweet, a Pyrin, and after spending a little time repairing my armor, I see that I actually have a pretty legit kit. I make a little bit more handgun ammo for this amazing gun, but I need to hurry. It's already day 59, one more day to get prepared to take on this tower. So I head out into the snow. At this time, I was looking for refined quartz. I couldn't find any yet, but I did manage to find this brand new pal, a Rangerix. Unfortunately, this, oh my god, firing squad of Meow Chris decided to unload and just execute the pal before I had a chance. I managed to settle the score, but couldn't catch the pal. Luckily, I found this, a Foxicle, which is a hilarious name for a pal, I will grant you that, but it's also a pretty amazing design, and I'm not even upset about using a Hyper to catch her. And pretty soon, 
we even managed to catch one of these rain drakes after all. After we catch this first one, the, uh, the friend here apparently wasn't so happy about that. But with our handgun, we quickly managed to catch her as well. While I'm up here, I managed to come across this. The Sibilex, a boss that's level 40. I'm gonna be real with you guys, pretty intimidating. This will definitely be the biggest boss we faced so far, but with my fire type advantage, I'm feeling like we might be able to do this. So we head in, and sure enough, we're doing a ton of damage, but she's really hitting hard back. We are now far enough into this game where it becomes pretty evident to me that the strongest tool you have is your pals. The best way to win these big level fights is to train them up and let them do most of the fighting. Sure, the handgun I got is pretty legit, but most of the damage that you're able to do is definitely going to come out of some of your highest level pals. Speaking of which, I have to throw out Relaxosaurus and hope he can do some damage. Unfortunately, Ice-type is really effective against Dragon, so he doesn't last too long. We can get Sibilex down to really low, and then it's just a matter of how many Hyper Balls it would take. And pretty soon, we have our highest level, strongest pal ever, and I love her. On the start of day 60, we get up, and I start to spend some of my soul pals to upgrade Relaxosaurus Lux. Then I check out how strong Sibilex is, and I gotta be honest with you, Pen King's done us well, but it's time for an upgrade. Now we're gonna do our day 60 event and take on the Free Pal Alliance. I was assuming that it would be an ice type up here. As soon as I saw this Free Pal Alliance dressed in all green, I knew I was in trouble. A Pelita comes out. Specifically though, this is Lily and Liline, the grass type. And with the health bar just under 70k, I was realizing this was gonna become a bit of a problem. I'm gonna start out with Relaxosaurus Lux since I just upgraded him and he does manage to put down a ton of damage. You should be trying to shoot the trainer off of the back of the pal. The pistol is doing a ton of damage, but Relaxosaurus is taking a ton of damage and I have to pull him back. It's Bron Cherry's turn. There isn't a huge type advantage in here, but luckily there won't be a disadvantage. This should put us in a position to bring out Van Worm for the finishing play. Sure enough, we do that, but also, we take a ton of damage, and we get really close to taking a death. If it wasn't for that brand new armor we built, we would have died right here. We would not have been able to take the W. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that. Van Worm clutched up, and he saved us. Another tower down, three to go. After that battle, feeling like a true conqueror, I was ready to have a true celebration. Yeah, you guessed it, farming more ore. Ha, <laughs> got you guys again. We spend the rest of day 60 cooking up all of our ore and basically resupplying as we plan where we're gonna go next. I think I wanna continue to go north past that last tower. Early on the start of day 61, we find this egg and then we even find this mine shaft. Inside of it is the queen bee, Elizabeth. Her little helpers immediately go in and blow up my van worm, but luckily he can tank the damage. After fighting that last leaf pal, this is pretty much a walk in the park. In fact, I even switched back to my crossbow to save ammo. Van Worm basically managed to solo this Elizabethan boss. By the way, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, just now as I'm watching this video, I, I just got the pun. Elizabeth, because she's a queen bee, and then like Queen Elizabeth. You'd think I'd be better with bad puns, but anyway. It's a quick catch and we're on to the next fight. I decide that I'm gonna go through the valley, and try to head towards that big ice mountain. I'm thinking that might be where the next tower is. As I'm flying up there, I find this area here. I think it's called the Verdant Grove. And in here, we find another Gorant. We managed to catch him pretty quickly. In fact, it might've been overkill there. We find some more Free Pal Alliance and Elizabeths, but I'm not too concerned with them. And I keep on moving on until I find this, Monsanta. I love these guys so much. I think I've already caught two or three, but I stop here for a little bit and catch a whole bunch of them. Also, I get to see Sibley's new powers, and I gotta say, I love her. She has no type advantage out here against all these grass types, but still, she is wasting them and making them way easy to catch. Also, we get this huge rocky egg, which will be super important later, and we continue our Monsanta catching spree. I'm really starting to fall in love with this Sibilex. We head out and I see that there's a desert on our right, but I continue towards the mountain. I start to climb up the base of it. Look, I thought that was refined quartz. It definitely looks like it can be mined, right? That's not just me. As we move up, we manage to catch some pals and get a level up, but also we find the furthest fast travel from our base yet. 
I put this into health because I'm starting to get a little nervous with all these high level pals. And pretty soon we get our first rifle, a single shot rifle. Now pay attention to how that gun looks and tell me this isn't clickbait. I was so excited to make this rifle, judging on how it looked. I mean, it looked like some modern semi-automatic rifle. I was really thinking it was going to be amazing that I help finish up all this ammo so I can make some room for it. I crapped up some hypers, hatched some of the eggs, including another Jorman, and I even managed to get a Ragnarok. First time catching this one, and it's pretty amazing. This is when we put away the huge rock egg and we head back out to the base of the frozen mountain. Now I'll admit, I was a little intimidated here and I didn't really know what I was gonna find. But as I was exploring this huge futuristic city, I find the best thing I possibly could, refined quartz. And it's really close to the fast travel. I managed to get as much as I can hold. And then I find this upgraded heat resistant metal armor schematic. That's gonna be super useful later. In addition, I found these huge pal souls, which is the first time I've ever seen them. I keep on moving on and very carefully start to move towards the ice. I have a feeling this is going to be one of the highest level areas. And when I see some of the pals, I realize I was right. Level 40. This could be dangerous. Luckily, again, they're ice. So these fire types, I swear fire types are the best pals, they keep on giving. And it gives me just enough strength to take down this Mamoranth Christ. Now, while I thought that was good, this, this right here, is the biggest tragedy of the entire video a level 50 lucky chillette. This is literally why we play the game. I was pretty excited here. I was thinking to myself, I've got a type advantage. I've got hyperballs. I'm thinking I might actually be able to do this. But pretty soon, my dreams are dashed. I see that I have a 0.3% chance of catching, so I have no choice but to kill what would have been the best pal I've ever caught. Guys, I can't explain how I still think about this. Like I still go to bed wishing I could have caught her. This is the real heartbreaker. This challenged my love of this game. I wanted this pal so bad, but there's nothing I could have done about it. The highest level spheres I had just bounced off, made me really think, do I want to keep playing this game for hundred days? Truth be told though, I was having so much fun. I decided that even this heartbreak couldn't stop me. I love this game, but sometimes it does test me. Today is one of those days. I head to bed and I'm gonna be real, this time I probably did cry myself to sleep. However, first, I would have to go through more heartbreak. I realized just how much of a clickbait this was. Look at the gun I can craft right here, compared to what I thought it was gonna be. Talk about Wish.com. Regardless of how much of a letdown the single shot rifle was gonna be, I, I was still gonna push through and try to craft it, which meant I needed more high quality pal oil. So I went out and got a few dumbucks and then went out and started poaching these Relaxosauruses. At this point, I think I'm just taking my anger out on these poor guys. But it was working. I managed to get myself a ton of high quality oil, which got polymers, which eventually got me this goofy single shot rifle. This thing looks like it's from the 18th century. What am I looking at right now? Either way, I started crafting it up. At the start of day 64, I woke up and finally got my single shot rifle. And yes, I was a little bit let down, but I was still pretty sure that I'd get some good use out of this brand new gun. Now I was gonna farm to get some bullets for it since I had never had any single shot rounds. That meant getting a little bit of sulfur and getting a little bit of metal. Then I got to test out the damage and at 12,042, I was realizing that this gun could be a pretty good little sniper rifle. What would not be fun is losing my flying mount again. Now I'm stranded in this desert. I come across the level 18 Nightwing boss and luckily, he's not too scary, so I managed to catch him pretty easily. However, that doesn't really solve my problems. I'm still trying to figure out a way to get home. Next, we have Dumbuck. And even though he's an Electro-type, Relaxosaurus Lux absolutely demolishes this guy. I have to pull him back early halfway through his attack to leave a sliver of hope that I could catch this guy. But luckily, I pull it off, and I do. What's not so lucky is now that the sun is set and I have heat-resistant armor, I'm actually starting to freeze in one of the low level areas. I get lucky just before I die, I find a fast travel and manage to get home. On the start of day 65, we have enough polymer to make some circuit boards. Also, with all the resources we've got, we start to make some single shot ammo and we even get rewarded with a Wumbo hatch. These guys are awesome, I love them. A Van Worm Crist, which is pretty cool too, and some Sibyls, which is always nice. We get the circuit boards 
and we even hatch a King Patch of Christ. These eggs have us on a roll here. Also, we get our very first Verdash, and we level up purely off of hatching eggs. I gotta admit, I'm getting kind of addicted to this. Also, this means now we can craft the refined metal armor, and I really need this refined metal headpiece. So, I immediately start to craft it up. I also want to get this heat resistant armor, so I go out for a little bit of farming. I craft up a ton of refined metal, and then head to bed. Unfortunately, now we need leather to get that armor. Right now, we're replacing the old sphere assembly line with a level 2 one. I get it lined up in the same spot as the old one, and start building it. I also start to use those large pal souls to upgrade Relaxosaurus. I even decide to give Warsex some love, since he's been doing such a good job helping me with the captures. Then we head out and get started on our very first Ultra Balls. This is kind of a big deal here. We can already get 10. And speaking of Warsec, that huge rocky egg hatches into one. Not bad. I decide to hang out and help craft up some of the Ultras, because I really want to test these things out. By that night, we have about 10 of them crafted up. And so by the next morning, we should be ready to see just how strong they are. I head out and capture this Mammarist. This time, it's not for the high quality oil, but instead for the leather. I hate to say it, but these guys are just so good for everything. Speaking of being good, we get another raid. All it does though is give us more leather. We head out one more time and get this large frozen egg. But to be honest, while we're out here, it's pretty dangerous. So I have to be very selective with where I go. Once again, we're hugging the outskirts and trying to get eggs. However, I see another Sibilex. If we can catch enough of these, we can condense into our Sibilex. So I decide to go for a catch. I try a Hypersphere, and for right now, this is doing okay. We'll have to test the Ultras later. This chest right here gives us another large Soul Pal. Remember, chests in this area have large Soul Pals. That's going to be important later. For right now, we're going to fight this Mammarist. With our type advantage, I'm thinking we might be able to get it low enough, and I kind of want to go for a catch here. We try out a Hypersphere, and we get 9%. Now, we're going to finally try out these Ultra Spheres. Well, it's a huge letdown, because they're barely any stronger than the Hyperspheres. It still works, but I was massively disappointed. I felt like it was barely any difference. I stay out that night, and I'm going to try them out a little bit more. Maybe that was a false alarm. The more and more I fight, the more and more I... Well, one, I'm wasting these brand new spheres, but also, they're not really catching too well. I get all the way down to four by the end of that night alone. And that's bad, because next, we find another lucky Wumpo. This guy, this guy right here was everything that I could have wanted. I couldn't catch that Chillette, but finally, with my Ultra Balls, I might actually have a chance here. But this guy was much, much stronger than the Chillette. I send out Warsex, hoping he can slow the fight down, but he barely can. I start to use my single shot rifle and unload with headshots barely tickling him. His health bar is barely moving and Warsex is taking huge chunks of damage. Eventually though, the early access part of this game does kind of tip into my favor. He gets stuck inside this rock and now he can't hit us. However, I have AOE moves on my Van Worm so I can still aim in his direction and hit him. Unfortunately, after fighting for an entire night, we only have a 0.3 chance of catching, even with the Ultra Balls. And it turns out, even with these bad boys, I have no chance. And I had to lose another level 50 lucky. Yeah, this game is really testing me. Remember how I said this game was going to give us some tragedy around day 60? I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm pretty heartbroken right now. I managed to get this huge damp egg, which helped a little bit, but I'm still reeling after this. I head back home and start cranking out these Ultra Balls, realizing that I'm going to need a lot of them to get catches after all. And of course, I have to put Bron Cherry and Relax in the box to heal. That's how bad that fight went for me. After feeling a little bit tilted at this point in the game, I decide to just waste some time away farming metal and the next day farming a little bit of coal. I'm hoping that this could at least make me feel like I'm making a little bit of progress. And we actually do get a little something good going for us here. I find another settlement with a fast travel right on the edge of Mount Obsidian. It's pretty nice, they sell pal oil. We head back to base and craft up a ton of refined ore. This level up just gave us lettuce, not too impressive, but the next one will give us shotgun. That's something we really need. We also need this refined metal helmet, and we need this upgraded refined metal armor as well. Pretty soon, we get both. While that's crafting, I decide to do a little more farming. 
I come back that night to find it's halfway done. Yeah, this thing takes forever. So I do a little more farming. I come back in the middle of the night to find it still needs more time. So I go to bed a little bit defeated. I'm just hoping that this can be done by day 70. Really, really hoping. Did you guys see that? I made it all the way through day 69 without making a 69 joke. Are you guys proud? Well, I'm proud of these Ultra Balls and this heat-resistant refined metal armor. An upgrade in almost double the protection. And with that, I'm feeling pretty confident so that we can take on our Day 70 Challenge. That's right, we're going to Mount Obsidian's Tower. Let's go. Now, I'm going to admit, I didn't really know what to expect here. I was pretty sure that he would have a fire pal, like, you know, fire or lava. Turns out, Axel and Orsix are an electric type. Yeah electric and dragon to be specific. A little taken off guard here, but I thought Warsex would be a good way to open this. Turns out I was right. He's super effective and isn't taking too much damage. On top of that, I'm managing to nail these headshots with this rifle. So everything's going well. And this part right here, not so well. They have this huge AOE attack. I have to jump out of the middle of it and I'm unable to get my Sybil out of it in time. She takes a huge chunk of damage. I need to be more careful with those big AoEs. I keep Sybil X out though because her Ice type is really good against Dragon type, but I had to pull her back because she took damage in that big AoE. Speaking of that big AoE, it one-shots Bron Cherry Aqua. It one-shots her. And just like that, I'm down a pal. Unfortunately, next we take this massive hit. The AoE hits us, rocks Warsect, and almost straight up kills me. I have to switch him out and go with Van Worm until he takes another big AoE, and a big chunk of his health is gone now too. I'm super low and doing everything I can to stay away, but I'm starting to get good at pulling my pals away before the big AoE goes off. I managed to pull Warsect back just in time there, and now he's really putting some damage in. Warsect is getting low, but we now have them down to half health. It just wasn't enough time though. I don't know if this counts as a death. You guys let me know in the comments if you think that that means I died. I mean, technically my body's still out here, but I didn't actually take a death. I took a time out. Look, if it counts as a fail, go ahead, give me a dislike. I don't care. I'm still finishing out the 100 days no matter what. So in that spirit, I go out that night and I continue to do everything I can to try to level up. I take out a Bushi and then I take out this Blaze Howl Knocked. I was kind of hoping to catch him, but yeah, I might have been a little bit upset right there. No lie. However, I do manage to get back on my feet and catch the second Blaze Howl Knox, my very first time catching one of these guys. Also, this is the very first time I had a Gobfin Igneous as I bought him from the Pal Merchant. Then that huge damp egg turns into this Suzuka Aqua, which is a big deal. Now that I know that we're going to be facing an electric type, I definitely am going to boost up my War Sex. Also, I plan to boost up my Sybil too, since they're both going to be pretty effective against the Electric and the Dragon type. I also start to hatch some Kitsunes, which I just think are cool. No benefit there, but still fun. And that night, I head to this dungeon so that I can start to farm the Sybils. Yeah, I'll admit, I was still a little upset from yesterday's timeout, still not calling it a death, a timeout. So I don't know if I was actually trying to level up or if I was just taking my anger out here. But either way, we do manage to capture another Siblex boss and I go to bed feeling a little bit better. The next day, we get up, and I immediately head out to the Astral Mountains. I'm going to go out here and farm large eggs like I always do, but I'm also going to try to find some more pals to help me fight the Obsidian Tower. Then, I come across these guys. I gotta say, they do look pretty cool. I didn't manage to get both of them, but one of them is still pretty good. Chrono Lynx. Definitely a pretty cool pal. I keep on moving around, trying to collect as many large eggs as I can. I know that they could have Siblexes inside of them. Also, while I'm doing this, I'm looking for chess, and I come across this, a TM called Blizzard Spike. So of course, we already know who I'm gonna teach this to. This is a 130 power game changer for this next fight. And it only gets better because we find a wild Siblex out here as well. I'll admit it's a pretty high level, but we have the type advantage here. And I'm willing to use a couple of Ultra Balls to get her down, Then we've got another one. Top of that, we get a huge damp egg and keep on collecting more and more ice pals to get ready for this fight. We get back home and finally we can condense the Siblex and get her a big boost in her base stats. On day 73, we head back out to Mount Obsidian because I'm trying to catch more Van Worms and also trying to catch this Blaze Howl. 
Yes, I know that this probably won't be handy in the fight, but I just think he's cool, and I want to catch every pal I can. Another reason I'm here, though, is to collect medium souls. The more of these I can get, the more I can power up my pals. Next, we find this cave, which I gotta admit, does look pretty cool. And inside of it, we find Lavanders. Yes, we found the spicy hot den where they're hiding. Also, I found out that I'm a superhero. I'm a mutant, I guess, because lava doesn't affect me when I'm here. So that's nice. On a quick side note, you can tell a game has a lot of promise if it's really buggy like this and still so much fun. Speaking of a lot of promise, we managed to find another medium soul and we get another level up. This is a really big deal because this will immediately give Sibilex more power and gives us more health. But the biggest thing that we really gained here is the shotgun. The shotgun at level 39 is a huge power boost in this game and it will really help us out. I unfortunately cannot say the same for this Dino some Lux. I was really hoping to capture her, but no luck. So I pop out of the cave the very next day and immediately see another cave and I head in here. Of course, while I'm here, I see another amazing pal. I see a Monsandra Lux, which is just a dope penguin with a mohawk, and I love him. I do not love the fact, though, that my Sibilex wiped him out. She's becoming a little too strong. And what's even worse is at the end of this dungeon, there's a pal that I couldn't care less about. And while that was a little bit lame, this is pretty cool. For the very first time, I see Jetrodon. I didn't know it at the time, but this is essentially the Mewtwo of this game. This is the Apex Pal, and I knew exactly what I wanted to try to do by the end of these 100 days. I also knew that I had a lot of work to do, so I headed out to try to find more Pal Souls. Then I immediately invested them into Sibilex, and soon I was ready to start getting large Pal Souls. Now I pretty quickly ran out of large Pal Souls, but I knew where I could get more. But I can't worry about that right now. On the start of day 75, I get Pump Action Shotgun. I get all the coal and refined ore. At the same time, I start crafting up a ton of ammo for it. I'm hoping I have enough ready for day 80. Sure enough, by that night, it's finally done. It took us a whole day, but this shotgun was well worth it. I grab a few Ultra Balls, but I'm not going to need them. What I do need is to upgrade my pals with as many souls as I can, because now we're going back to redeem ourselves as we go for an immediate rematch. It turns out, with this shotgun and the upgrade in Sybil, we are really starting to do a lot of damage. At this point in early access in this game, the pump action shotgun is just too strong. Even though we're taking these really bad AoE damage moves, we're still doing a ton of damage and it's only been a few minutes. I send out Relaxosaurus to do as much damage as he can, but in truth, he's kind of just stalling for time so that our other pals can heal. He starts to get low, so I send out Bron Cherry, but I know that she's basically just a sacrifice. I pull her back before she's completely gone and throw out Van. Now Van is a pretty strong pal and he does a good amount of work, but let's be honest, Sibilex is going to be the deciding factor. She comes in and along with my shotgun, we really start to deal a ton of damage. Her blizzard spike is routinely freezing Alex in place and she's taking very little damage from the dragon moves and I'm managing to pull her back in time to miss the AoEs. I might have taken a little bit of damage there, but honestly, that's worth it. At this point, it's much better to conserve my pals. Speaking of, I still managed to save Sibilex and throw out Warsect. And once again, Warsect comes in clutch and he cleans up this fight. Looking pretty good. Easy, buddy. He's dead already. Calm down. So we redeemed ourselves. I still don't count that as a death. I think it's a timeout. I'm sticking by it. And now we're continuing on with the rest of the playthrough. Fortunately, that means a, a lot of mining, I'm not going to lie. We get charcoal and sulfur. But now I basically own this mountain, so I kind of deserve it. We make a ton of gunpowder. And while that's cooking, we head to bed. Now, on the start of day 77, we have to look at the map and figure out where we're going to go to take on our next big challenge. Step one, T-pose to assert dominance. Step two, as we take all that gunpowder, and sadly, yes, we're going to be doing a whole lot more farming to get metal. I want to use this to craft up as many shotgun shells as I can. While we wait for that to craft, though, let's not sit around and waste too much more time. Let's take on this brand new boss, Verdash. Now, I did manage to already hatch one of these, but it'd be really nice to catch a full level boss. Luckily, we have a pretty solid type advantage here with Van Worm. And even though we don't have the shotgun shells and we have to use our pistol, it's still strong enough to make sure that these ultra spheres can get a pretty easy catch. Another boss down. 
After that, I continued to head out looking for the desiccated desert, but I didn't really know how to find the path to get there. One thing I did find was this Jorman tide, which would be really useful later on. The next day, I eventually did find the desiccated desert, and I found another dinosaur Lux. Unfortunately, once again, I didn't really manage to catch this one. This poor pal keeps on getting the worst luck. I find one more Dino Lux up here, and this time I slow down, take my time, I'm a little bit more patient with my hyperspheres. Okay, apparently I'm a little bit more patient with my ultraspheres. Okay, apparently I'm extremely patient with my ultraspheres. After wasting sphere after sphere after sphere, we finally do catch one. I also managed to find this, Lucky Tuku Tuku. Unfortunately, a level 50, I already know the outcome, so I don't even try. I've already accepted that I'm not gonna be able to catch them. I do, however, think I might be able to catch these guys. The Rayhounds. These guys at level 36 are pretty tough, but I still managed to catch the pair of them. Like I said though, this area is pretty high level, and I'm getting my butt kicked pretty bad. I, I kinda had to get that fast travel and get out of there right away. I quickly repaired all my armor, and did a mining run where I got a full inventory of refined ore mats. Then I went to the fishing village, bought a bunch of pal oil, and yes, I did a little bit more mining. I had to get all the materials I needed to repair my kit. But finally, by day 79, we'd got all of our armor repaired and was feeling pretty ready to go and take on another boss. This Wombo Batana was looking like the next score. Once again, we had the type advantage locked down. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate a solid fire type and even though she was 38, that catch was pretty easy. I reward the hard work of my van with all the pancakes in the world, and when I get back home, I'm starting to take a look at this Suzuka Aqua. A water type would be really good if the next tower has a fire boss, and I'm thinking that'll be exactly what we have to deal with in the desert. And I have to admit, he looks pretty sick to boot. And that night, as I'm crafting, I start to get an idea. It would be really good to have a water type, wouldn't it? At the start of day 80, I have my mind made up. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go after one of the highest level bosses we possibly can. Soon, we're face to face with Jormantide, a level 45 water dragon. Definitely a challenge, but our Rexosaurus Lux might be able to help us out here. His lightning moves are super effective. We're doing a good chunk of damage, but unfortunately he's just too high level and Relaxosaurus is really starting to look bad. We pull him back, and I throw out good old trusty Warsect. He's tanking a lot, but then Jormantide gets smart, turns on me, and starts to really chunk me down. And he's still aiming at me with that lightning attack. Luckily, Warsect is still managing to do a good chunk of damage in the meantime. Finally get Jormantide low enough so that these Ultra Balls have a, jeez, a 12% chance. I guess this is about the best I'm gonna get. I have 13 left. I'm hoping we can do this. Down to 10. Now eight, but finally, finally, we get a little bit lucky and we managed to catch the strongest pal I've ever seen. This guy truly is a beast. With him on our side, we might actually have a chance to take on this next big boss. As much as I love Broncherry, I have to switch her out and put Jorman in. He's our new team leader. With both Lord of the Sea and Ferocious, this guy looks pretty formidable. So of course, with this extremely strong pal on my side, I'm gonna immediately go farm more metal. Yeah, come on guys, you already know how I do this. I get a ton of refined ores cooking because I want a lot of ultra spheres as well as a ton of shotgun shells. The rest of today is spent going around the map trying to get some quick pal catches. Remember, even low level pals still give you your max amount of XP. So farming all these guys till you get 10 out of 10 is the best way to level up, and that's what we need to do right now. I also think it's kind of funny. At this point, I'm just farming the same Amorest that had terrified me on day one. I find this merchant and see that he's selling Acid Rain, the exact same move that I had seen was super effective before. So of course, I buy it. Now, I can take this move that was irritating me so much and use it for good. I get a ton of Ultra Spheres and craft up even more. By the end of the day, I have a total of 16. But no matter how high powered I get, I will still never be above going out and just beating up some poor innocent lift monks. I spend the rest of the day getting some more ammo and some more ingots and hatching so many pals that I actually fill up. 
That's right, I've filled up my entire pal box and now I can't hold any more pals. I, did, I honestly didn't even know this was a thing. And on the start of day 82, I immediately go to the fishing village to sell all the pals I don't need. It is a fire sale. I literally am selling almost all of them. Then I head out to the desiccated desert. The idea is I still do want to get a few catches, like these little daisies, for example. But also another reason I'm here is I want to find brand new pals. For example, this is the fire type of the pal I have. I do have to use some ultra spheres, but new pal catches are so worth it, it doesn't even really matter. I managed to catch a pair of them and then move on to a brand new pal. No, not the Tuki Tukis, the one behind that. Apparently, there's a Robin Quill Terra, the rock version of Robin Quill. I managed to catch this first one and get another new Palin today for a big boost of XP. I tried to catch this last one, but unfortunately, he wasn't coming quietly. And I mean, that's what happens when you just don't accept your fate. I get home, reload, and get some more spheres, but then I head right back to the desert. Another reason I'm here too is to try to get medium souls. I still need a lot of these in order to upgrade my pals. And then I come across this. In the middle of the desert here, I find like an army of syndicates. I think this one has a freaking rocket launcher. Yeah, so obviously we had to kill him. And while I'm doing a pretty good job at taking out as many of these as I can, they just seem to keep coming. So eventually I have to retreat with the little sliver of health left. Just before I leave the desert though, I find yet another brand new pal, a Serpent Terra, a rock version of a Serpent. Eventually, I do manage to get my first capture of one. Then I find another, and like I always do, I catch them in pairs. Fortunately, this Serpent doesn't know it yet, so he does break out of the sphere a few times. Eventually though, he learns. Eventually, they all learn. Then I learned that there's a city in the middle of this desert. That's right, we're in the middle of Agrabah. I do hit this fast travel, and unfortunately it's so cold that I decide to go home before exploring any further. We'll just have to see that place tomorrow. Day 83, full lock and load as we make a ton of shotgun ammo. Also, we load up our Jormantine with small souls to get his power up. Then we continue by loading up medium souls. And all of this is leading up to my final plan, which is doing more mining. Oh my God, you guys fall for it every time. Okay, but seriously, we will be getting some more pal souls soon. First, let's stop by this new town. Unfortunately, there isn't much left of it by the time we get here. I was hoping for an oasis and ended up with Oakland. It is kind of nice that this vendor sells bullets, fitting in this neighborhood. And also, there's a lavender, so they're selling love. And, uh, well, a hang you as well, fitting for this town. Seriously, it's almost like they did this on purpose. I decide to climb around the walls, getting my Assassin's Creed on, but of course, we find this little treat, an electric egg. But I'm pretty much done with this town. I move on pretty quickly and start to head to this next cave. Inside of here, we find a Blaze Howl Nox, and pretty soon, I get myself a new little catch. We continue to look through each chest, looking for more souls, and eventually we get to the end, which of course, fittingly, is another Blaze Howl Nox. Since this is a fire type, I decide to chest out our Jorman and he makes quick work of this blaze howl. I don't really have to do much anything. I can just stand here and watch. He did his part pretty well. Me, on the other hand, not so much. I end up missing until I get all the way down to two Ultra Balls. The good news is we still managed to get a level up out of this. Out of that level up, I get Lily's Spear, which I'm pretty excited to see what this is all about. Then we keep on moving south and eventually find this fast travel. Get ourselves this large dark egg, then head back home. We have to crank out even more altar balls since we ran out and of course have to do even more farming. Just like a buffet, I get myself overloaded and overweight, but when I come back home, I manage to craft up Lily Spear, which turns out to actually be really, really useful. See, as I'll demonstrate, I go up to this poor defenseless pal and just have to pickaxe its face to death. Not very efficient. And of course the pal suffers as well. Not that I care too much about that. More importantly, I waste a lot of time trying to do that inefficient method. Using a pick on these poor defenseless animals eventually causes my pick to break. So yes, not ideal. I head back home and quickly help finish up this spear. This will be my new melee item from now on. I continue to farm throughout the day, and when I get home that night, I continue to craft up more cement so we can have more Ultra Balls. On day 85, we get a ton of carbon fiber, like maybe too much, but you can never have too many Ultra Balls, so we get some more of those as well. 
I then go out with my brand new spear and start poking up all these poor defenseless pals that are way, way, way below my level. Doesn't matter because every single catch still gets you the max amount of XP. We get 10 out of 10 direwolves and then even solo melee down this chalette and catch her because why not? Unfortunately, the part that's kind of funny is we actually didn't get XP from the boss because we already had 10 out of 10 chalettes. We will, however, get some XP from catching these little guys. I go up into a slightly higher level area and catch 10 out of 10 floppies, trying to power level myself. Now, we turn our attention to the Cinemoths. We catch a few of them, as well as a few Robin Quill. Pretty soon, we have 10 out of 10 Cinemoths, so I decide it's time to go out in the middle of the night and commit some crimes by darkness. We start to run around and poke up all these little hoo crates. We finish out the night getting as many as we can. Early the next morning, we get even more Ultra Balls, and eventually we go back to farm King Paka. Unfortunately, we have uh, one small problem here. I only have Pal Spheres, one Mega Sphere, which I'm going to save for this Malpaka, and Ultra Spheres, which means I had to waste an Ultra Sphere on this low-level boss. Yikes. I do end up taking my anger out on this Malpaka, though, so it's all worth it in the end. We get ourselves another Capritzi, then we get ourselves another Malpaka. Because we're doing all of this low-level catching, we pretty quickly get ourselves a level up, and we can upgrade ourselves to an even better shotgun, which once again puts us in an even higher tier of damage doing. Then I finally find this place. This is definitely one of the most ridiculous places in the game. I mean, just look at this. Cages, torturing devices, guillotines everywhere. What am I looking at exactly? I'm kind of afraid to sell any pals to this guy. We managed to hatch up a Tuki Tuki to get 10 out of 10, which means, thank God, I never have to catch those guys again. And then we're back to, yeah, that's right, even more farming. Good news is, it all pays off because we get a ton of refined ore. This should help us make our last bit of gear. Speaking of, by that night, we take some of our refined ingots and finally make the pump action shotgun. By the morning of day 87, we can finally get this beauty. And I gotta admit, this thing does a ton of damage. Combined all these things, and we might actually start to have a hope of standing up to the Day 90 event. I, I hope. For right now, though, we're going to head across the desert to the desiccated mineshaft where we're going to be taking on Menesting, a dark rock type. Jormantine's attacks are super effective. Not the water against rock, no. It's actually his dragon being super effective against the knight. Doesn't really matter, because either way, he's taking some huge chunks out of the sky. And I'm getting to see firsthand just how insanely powerful Jormantide really is. Gets him pretty low, then I find out just how powerful the shotgun is, as it's doing an insane amount of damage to this super high level boss. We start to throw out the Ultra Spheres, and now I'm seeing how these things are about the weakest part of our kit. Fortunately, Ultra Spheres just aren't very good. Although they do finally get us this amazing catch. Mega Sting is really one of the cool ones. And as a reward, we get the refined metal helmet level four. That's right, a legendary helmet. So of course, to make this helmet, you guys already know, here we are again, farming everything we can. And at first I spend most of them on shotgun shells, but that night I get almost another 100, and I decide to spend these on the refined helmet instead. This should be a massive boost in our armor. Fortunately, it's going to take all day to cook, so we'll come back to it tomorrow. On day 89, we have one more day to get prepared before our next big challenge. I decide to go out into this cave to see if there's any good catches we can get down here. And sure enough, I get lucky, because at the very end I get... no, absolutely nothing actually. We get a Les Punk Igneous, which not only do I not need this for the next fight, but I think I already have 10 out of 10 of these guys. On the bright side though, I get to test out my Suzuka Aqua and see just how powerful he is against a fire type. Sure enough, He's leveled up quite a bit since I last used him, and even though he's a glass cannon and can't take much damage, he finishes this fight off pretty quick. Speaking of defense, we get this legendary refined metal helmet, and I'm feeling a lot better. We craft up a ton of Ultra Spheres, and we craft up a ton of ammo. We're going to need every bit of help for Day 90. You guys already know what time it is. At the start of day 90, we're charging right into the desiccated desert tower. I don't know who this is, he looks like a stunning young gentleman, but I'm pretty sure he's going to have a fire type Marcus and Phalaris turn out to be exactly that, a fire type bird. 
So, Jormantide should be amazing here. Unfortunately, he will not be amazing if he takes those massive electric attacks like that. Also, it definitely won't be amazing if I leave behind our Suzuka Aqua for this little 11-11 Kelpsy. Big mistake. We're basically already down one pal and a half. And after that massive AoE that shreds Warsect, we're basically down a whole two pals. I throw out Jormantide, and I gotta admit, he's looking amazing and doing a ton of damage. I just don't know if it'll be enough. I'm trying to use this shotgun, but like all shotguns, it's doing really little damage from a distance, and when you're attacking a bird like this, it's tough to get up close. Unfortunately, the time is running down and we're barely doing any damage. I'm trying really hard to keep all my pals alive, but unfortunately, Jormantide just can't carry it all by himself. He takes a death, my shotgun is broken, and my backup team is just not going to be able to get it done. We once again run out of time. And I've got to admit, I was pretty disheartened right here. This was the second time in a row that I had failed a tower. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull it out. I kept on working though throughout the rest of day 90, but at this point, I didn't really know what I was playing for. When you have to go and clean up your dead body, it's tough to say that this isn't a death. At this point, I'm not even sure if this counts as a 100 days anymore. I catch another Pain King, and I head back and go to bed, not really sure what I'm going to do for the last 10 days. But it sure doesn't feel good. I sit here, helping out with the carbon fiber, not really sure what the future's going to hold. Although I do have one little idea. We go out to find Jormantide once again. I'm going to try to catch another one of these bad boys. Unfortunately, the electric moves are still very effective. Even more unfortunately, uh, Pal World is still, well, Pal World. Jormantide decides to join Team Rocket and is blasting off again. Yeah, there's, um, there's your early access right there. I'm not deterred though. I'm going to go around and try to beat as many of these bosses as I can. I'm thinking at this point that maybe in the last 10 days, I'll try to do all the bosses in the game. And pretty quickly, we get Relaxosaurus Rex taken out of the way. However, now that I'm here, I have another idea. Maybe I can catch a few of the regular Relaxosauruses, and I can condense them into my Relaxosaurus, which would be another water type that would be good in the fight if we tried it again. So pretty quickly, I start catching as many Relaxosauruses as I can. I stay here for basically the rest of the day, and, well, I mean, I, I try to catch them. Sometimes Pain King goes a little ham and, well, just murders them outright, but whenever I can, I manage to snag as many of the Relaxosauruses in this area as possible. And you can tell I'm getting a little frustrated here. I'm using Ultra Balls on like level 15s. I'm tilted at this point, to say the least. The next morning, I head out to buy myself a TM to teach to this Relaxosaurus, and I try to get him even better water type moves. Because if we have Relaxosaurus, Jor, and Suzuka Aqua, we might have a chance. It'll really help us out if we can continue to level up Relaxosaurus. So, we're going on a spree, catching as many as I can. I'm not only going to try to get four, I'm going to try to get a full 16 to get him to level two. In the process, though, I am catching just any type of pal I can come across. The more I level up, the more and more it will help out Jormantide, who's at level 45. And we're only at level 42, so technically his level has been dragged down, and it is hurting him. What will help him is definitely pumping him full of as many souls as possible. However, while we have a ton of small and a ton of medium, we've run out of large souls. So I have one last plan in mind. It's going to revolve a little bit of hunting, so I go out to get a little more ammo. I am pretty happy though. We managed to get ourselves a Suzuka, which is pretty nice, but it's not going to help us out in the fight. Another Jormantide though might definitely help us out. And I managed to find another spawn location so that we might be able to farm even more of them before the end of these 10 days. And sure enough, I found out that the shotgun is super effective if you get really close. Unfortunately, a German time will usually use a power attack right in your face if you get too close, but, but you learn some things, you know, for better or for worse. Luckily this time, Jesse and James didn't come to save this German time, and he isn't going anywhere. Yes, he might just be a 13% catch, but I've got 45 Ultra Balls and all the time in the world. I'll wait. Sure enough, we eventually managed to catch our second Jormantine. With some of this high quality pal oil we've gotten, I decide to make some polymer when another raid comes. This time, however, the fireball attack from my van gets all the enemies dead before they even get to my door front. I don't have time for them anyway. I have to go out and start farming more Jormantides. 
On 93, we do just that. Now, with all the extra souls, even though I have a three level disadvantage, I managed to take this fight pretty quickly. I pull him back, get him all the way down to 36 health, and once again, start throwing out my Ultra Spheres. I get him super low. Even then, it's still a 13% catch, but we do manage to get a third Jorman type. By the way, there is a reason that we are getting all this polymer. You'll see pretty soon. For now, I'm gonna head back out to the Relaxosaurus area and do a little more poaching. The bad news is, by catching these guys specifically, we're not getting any XP. So I take a quick break and go catch these serpents instead, until sure enough, I do manage to get another level. Here at 43, we can get the Hyper Shield. Also, we get this little guy stuck in a wall, just kind of brutally catch him. I mean, he was stuck in a wall. Where else was he going? This is kind of saving him in a way. Speaking of saving, we save up all of these Relaxosauruses, and we do in fact manage to get our boy two stars. That's a big deal. Another big deal is now we have another level 2 production line complete. We set this bag boy out, and once again, I start to go farming the Mamasaurus. And I gotta say, at the end of our playthrough here, the fact that we can knock this guy off without even trying shows just how far we've come. Another boss with Petalina taken out, then we managed to go take out this Elphidra without even getting off the back of my van. It's basically just a drive-by at this point. And the reason we're going around and killing all these bosses isn't just to make myself feel better, we actually need to kill or capture as many as we can because we're farming ancient sieve parts. And yes, we do manage to one-shot the Chillette, which I will admit that does make me feel a little bit better. What really makes me feel good is we finally have enough ancient sieve parts to make the cold-resistant refined metal armor. That's pretty good. Finally, on day 94, we have to go to this King Paka, and we managed to knock him off pretty easily as well though. And we move right on to Bushi. And eventually, we catch ourselves another Bushi. Enough wasting time, though. The real thing that we've been waiting for is the respawn of the Jormantides. We go out and start to catch us another one. Now, at this point, all the leveling up I've done and all the souls we've invested in this Jormantide makes this fight very one-sided. My Jormantide barely takes any damage at all, and this guy is completely finished. At just four health, he's a pretty easy catch. Now, we have a total of four Jorms. I head back to the beginning to take out Mamorous again, just because it feels so good to have so much control over something that used to be so terrifying to me. It'll feel even better once we have this. Now we have enough ancient civ parts to finally make our Hyper Shield. Speaking of coming so far, I take a second to admire my base. All of these giant dragons going around, bosses now on my team, it feels pretty good. I just have one last thing to do. We head out to the Astral Mountains. We're going to be spending a few days out here. The reason we're here? That's right, large pal souls. We also come across Frost Stallion. As amazing as she looks, I think we might not be able to take this one on. Not just yet. All I want is to sneak around here and grab this chest. In this icy mountain, the Astral Mountains, all of these chests have large pal souls. We're starting to go around and collect a ton of them. It's now day 95, and I kind of have to hurry. But this is time well invested. We're getting a ton of eggs, which will eventually translate into a ton of XP. But more importantly, we're getting a ton of large souls. These will all directly power up whichever pal we decide will be our number one going into this very final fight. And I don't even think I have to tell you who that's going to be. Jormantide now is fully maxed out on all of his combat stats. We're gonna be going against Germantide one last time. If we can manage to catch five of them, that means we can condense four of them into our original Germantide and get him to a powered up Jor. This time, I decide to fight the Germantide with my Suzuka Aqua to see just how strong he is. He's not as strong as I'd like him. We do manage to win the fight, but it's really close. I'm afraid that I might not be as strong going in as I thought I was. I will say, getting my Jormantine an extra star does make me feel pretty good though. Going into day 97, I have about three more days to get ready. Yes, we're gonna be doing a little more farming, sure, but the real thing that we're doing for most of today is we're just trying to get as many captures as we possibly can. We're trying to get 10 out of 10s to get up to the highest level we can with the remaining time. And that means we're staying up late to get the Who Crates, and freezing in the cold, but it's all worth it. If we can get to 44, we'll get legendaries. That'll be huge for us. 
We go out and start farming in the desert, and sure enough, I've decided it's time. We're going to be taking on Anubis. Right away I can see he's not some normal fight. He's putting down a lot of moves, and he's really starting to mess up my Jormantide here. But he's got a lot of really impressive moves. And even when I get him down to bare minimum health, he still only has a 9% catch rate with Ulta Balls. I have 7 left, this might not go well. Turns out on this one, luck was on my side, and we managed to get ourselves Anubis. It's a pretty big deal. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm still catching as many pals as I can, getting as much XP as I can, hoping to get to that 44. I still make sure that my pals have some pancakes. I haven't completely forgotten about them, but to be totally honest, I'm pretty locked in. That does mean that we're gonna be hatching all these eggs, which get us a huge amount of XP. So much so that eventually we're able to build this new electric furnace. Look at the whole team coming together to build it. I'm proud of you guys. With this electric furnace, you can finally make the highest quality ore in the game, PAL Metal. Sadly, we're only going to have about a day to play with this stuff, but this is the peak of the game here. We made it. Speaking of the peak of the game, we get up on day 99. This is it. Our last day. It's do or die. We head out to the desecrated desert and into the tower, where we just took a brutal loss not 10 days ago. To be honest with you guys, I'm not feeling very confident about this at all. If I had my way, I probably would have waited a few more days to take this fight, but this is a 100 day challenge and I don't want to leave you guys hanging. So here we are. After all, Jormantide is a beast, so maybe we have a chance. We're taking a lot of damage and this fight is really looking dangerous for us. Truth be told though, Jormantide is hanging in there pretty well. Then we send out Azuka Aqua who does a pretty good amount of damage. I mean, that acid rain is amazing. Combined with my shotgun, we really are laying into it. Jormantide's hydro laser isn't that bad either. Fortunately, this guy's health pool is just too big. Jormantide keeps fighting strong, and even with this guy's electric tax, we're still managing to hold in there pretty well. Unfortunately, we're only about halfway down, and the time has gotten all the way down to three minutes. I'm not giving up yet though. We're giving this everything we have. However, Unfortunately, once again, my shotgun is broken. So, no matter how hard my pals fight, we just aren't ready for this one. Look, the way that this 100 days ended was a tragedy. I wasn't lying at the beginning of this video. Not everything went our way, and at the end of it all, it's a bittersweet ending. But, it is still sweet. Because all the time we spent in this game has been amazing. For making my first ever 100 day video that wasn't Minecraft, I'm glad it was Power World, because this is an amazing game. Even in its early access, even with all the memes going on and all the potential lawsuits, I'm really glad we got to play this game. I wouldn't have it any other way.